members, the Right Honourable the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 13th of March 2018. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge their continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Members, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Please be seated. <laughs> Members, welcome to the City of Adelaide Council Chamber meeting Tuesday the 13th of March 2018. Uh, we have a full complement of members today, other than we have an apology from Councillor Priscilla Corbell Moore. So, members, I'll take you directly on to item four, Councillor Moran. Could I also give a, a late um, apology for um, Councillor Wilkinson, who's caught in traffic because somebody saw fit to block half King William Street outside the Mad Bank and traffic was back past my Adelaide. And I can't see a worker helping. Thank you, Councillor Moran. I promised you that was not the Lord Mayor that did that. <laughs> we will await Councillor Wilkinson. I'm sure will be with us as soon as practicable. But I'll keep the meeting going, members, because of course we have a we have a quorum. <coughs> members, can I take you directly to item four, which is confirmation of minutes from the meeting held on the 27th of February 2018? Can I have a mover to adopt those minutes? Councillor Martin, seconded by the Deputy Lord Mayor. Any questions, queries or comments, members, regarding those minutes? I'll put those directly before you for adoption. Those in favour? Those against? Done. We carry the minutes from the meeting held on the 27th of February 2018. Members, we have one public forum and we have one deputation with us today. The first matter I'll draw your attention to is a public forum by Mr Darcy Lunn, which is regarding aligning the City of Adelaide with the United Nations Global Goals through Teaspoons of Change. Mr Lunn, we can afford you a period of five minutes at the lectern. Welcome to the City of Adelaide Council Chamber. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, it's a lovely opportunity to be here this evening. Uh, first of all, a quick introduction. My name is Darcy Lunn. I'm otherwise known as the Boomerang to Adelaide. <laughs> I've spent the last 18 years in more than 90 countries around the world working in aid and development um, with UNICEF, Gates Foundation and many others. Um, but I'm now back here to, to try and integrate and activate the Global Goals for Sustainable Development uh, to business, education and government through Teaspoons of Change, which are small but significant ideas and actions that have a positive impact on people on the planet. Um, let me give you a, a quick overview of the Global Goals for Sustainable Development. These are 17 goals uh, created by the United Nations in 2015, agreed upon by all 193 sovereign states, and they have 169 targets, 244 indicators, but basically they're a global framework for us to all work together to try and achieve three major things. That is to end extreme poverty, reduce inequality, and protect the planet. 
Now, the, the overlay that I see here um, comes to me, first of all, through your strategic plan from 2016 to 2020. Um, I've read through this carefully and in detail, and my, idea, um, my brain was popping off with the, the language that is used in this document and how easily and how beautifully it does align with the Global Goals for Sustainable Development. Um, your initiatives of being a smart, green, um, creative and livable city certainly comply with many of those global goals, many of the targets and indicators. Um, a, I think uh, that this is good for council. Um, it allows the people in the city of Adelaide, both myself and my partner Serafina, uh, are based here on South Terrace in the city of Adelaide. We think that it adds a lovely sense of purpose to your citizens within that city and also um, to the Australian government. So, so this isn't just good for the people who live within here, but also those who are uh, watching the City of Adelaide. So there's currently a Senate inquiry onto how Australia is implementing these global goals through civics and governance. Um, and with Teaspoons of Change has made a submission to that, and we think it is a fantastic opportunity for the City of Adelaide to showcase how you can align yourself with this global framework and for that to be seen by the Australian government. Um, the first reportable idea of that is coming up in July. Uh, Australia has volunteered to give a report based on those goals and indicators, and so there is a wonderful opportunity to contribute to that. Uh, this is also good for community, adding a sense of purpose to your, your citizens, and also giving them a global perspective. Often Adelaide, we were accused of looking at our navels sometimes, when really we can be global contributors, and I think this is a great framework, framework to do that. Um, also, we are working closely with organisations like the UN Australian Association and Lydia for South Australia, and making sure that we know good people doing good things, and not just you know trying to pave the path, um, create a pathway ourselves, but collaborating, coordinating with many others. This is good for the environment, of which there are many points to this in that strategic plan. But most of all, most importantly, that I want to share with you this evening is that it's good for business. This is these are goals that are being adopted by organisations like Unilever. Mars Corp, um, in Australia, Cotton On, Etico, a few other organisations that are integrating these global goals and showing it that it's not just good intentions, but we can actually manage good outcomes. This is for things like employee retention, attraction, and keeping less boomerangs from flying off and, and keeping them in the state and bringing in more arrows like my partner Serafina from New Zealand and others. So it is a really good idea to adopt these global goals, not just as a good, good feeling and something nice to do, but actually making common sense and business sense in, in very real, real ways and means. Um, Serafina and I have had some great conversations with the Adelaide Central Markets, Adelaide Uni University, excuse me, uh, RAA, Beyond Bank, NAB and others, and they're very excited by these global goals, as, as I hope you might be as well, because they do see it that, that we all have a role to play in these uh, global goals as a global community. And Teaspoons of Change is the epitome of doing small things multiplied by lots of people to create big change. In 2018, Teaspoons of Change has a strategic plan. Uh, we're going for a thousand kilometre journey. I'm going to be walking, Serafina's going to be cycling from here to Mount Gambia and back. And so we would love to showcase how the City of Adelaide and what they're doing towards these local goals as we pass through each of those towns and communities, sharing it with local councils, sharing it with businesses. And uh, I'm a former teacher, well, actually, I still, still give hundreds of presentations in schools in that regard as well. Um, so thank you very much for this opportunity. I think it's also a wonderful opportunity for the City of Adelaide to be recognised, to look attractive to uh, other states and globally. And I also think that you can make a real contribution both at a local level within the residents of the City of Adelaide, um, within the state and particularly nationally, but also globally and putting your strategic plan and the things that you do on a month by month and week by week basis into that global context. I'd love to carry on the conversation, but thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Lund. Thank you for joining us in the City of Adelaide Council Chamber for your public forum. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Members, uh, Mr. Robert Gerard AO is speaking to us about item 10.3 on your agenda, which is regarding the Commonwealth Games. Mr. Gerard, welcome. And Mr. Gerard, we Forward you five minutes, and uh, is that that little sound you hear? Is that the end of the five minutes? Is it? Yes, sir. All right. It's the first time I've had the privilege. Sorry, I'm dressed like I've just driven from Juna 
where I've been on four weeks fishing. But uh, my wife uh, said to me, you better get into the town hall and address the councillors for this because it's something you're a bit passionate about. So I've been driving all day. We did it in eight hours. So here we are. I'd also like to welcome Josh Simons here behind. He's our Deputy Chair of the Olympic and Commonwealth Games Committee. The Chairman, Mark Butcher, unfortunately he's in Sydney. We couldn't get him here tonight, but Josh has come along to listen to us. Firstly, why should we bid for the 26 to 30 games? I've put two years in there or beyond, but why should we? Firstly, we're a state that's never had a games. I mean, we haven't had what all other states have had in Australia. I think you've got to look around and see what's happened in Queensland, Sydney, Melbourne, Perth. Perth began it all, I think, with the Empire Games. Some of us should all remember back the Empire Games, I think, in the 60s or late 60s. But they were the first to begin to all happen. And of course, the federal government, uh, John Howard always told me, built the MCG uh, for the uh, wonderful games that they had in 06 out of the southern stand there. And then, of course, the Olympic Games was fantastic. Again, the federal government moved in and did that. And, of course, uh, Queensland has had so much, and we have the wonderful games. Again, the Commonwealth, which could have been ours, should have been ours, and they actually got it without really having to have a bid, because there was really no one against them. So uh, they got the games, and they opened in two weeks' time. So it's been a, a fantastic uh, ride, and we should have had that, but we couldn't get the support for our to stand up and have it. I think what I'm really saying to you is that we are short a bit of federal funding. We had 90 million given us for the Adelaide Oval, which I think got rid of the debt of the Cricket Association at the time, but uh, that's what all what was put into our 550 million or whatever we spent down there. So the other states have had a very good crack at it. What happens with the games is not just the games, it's the infrastructure that's left behind. And when you look at what Adelaide could do in 26 or 30, and I think I'll push again those two dates, 30 I think is the better one. Uh, airport, you know, we don't even have a thing here that can take a 380, but we'll certainly get a big lift in our airport, a 380 terminal, and the areas that we can land 380s in the future. Trams, well, they'll go all around the city to take athletes and all that around. We'll, we'll fix soccer. I've had an interest in that over the time, but we'll fix soccer, we'll have a nice soccer ground, that'll be extremely good. We'll have another oval, we have to build another oval, we'll fix up rugby in the state, and all in all, with the second stadium, it will be magnificent. The village will be terrific. The village, uh, we should have a meeting and talk about it, but it should be built on the site of the Children's Hospital, when they move it. Uh, you'll notice up in Queensland, the village has made a profit, has been magnificently sold on. We could do the same in North Adelaide. We could build the six towers, sell all the units, sell and make a nice profit in that area. So that's quite spectacular. So all states have had something. We need one. I believe we project it forward. It's a billion dollars. A billion dollars written to us and given to us over perhaps a hundred million a year over ten years, and we can start to build. The states had too many knocks. We were losing too much and the, the, the worst part was losing General Motors Holdings back on the 17th last year. We died as a state and we need something to lift us. If you could come with us and strength, the public will want it. If the council comes along, we need the opposition and we need the government. Those three, the Adelaide City Council, the opposition and the government must sign a, a, a document to the Adelaide Commonwealth, Australian Commonwealth game to say we want the games. So we need the Adelaide City Council to say yes, because we're not sure who the opposition will be next week, and we're not sure who the government will be. Both of those, but I believe that if you come out strong, it'll be excellent and well done. So we can have the games. It won't cost us an enormous amount of funds if we build the right village, sell the village on. You could build it at the old RH site. There's two sites available. Children's and hospitals better. They can walk. There's no games in history have the athletes walked across the road and gone into the village. So the athletes will love it. We'll get masses turn up at the opening ceremony. Adelaide Oval will be fantastic. And as I said, we'll get the new soccer, the new rugby. You could build one of these down at the Royal, uh, down at the showground. This could happen. You could move that, change that over. That would be a decision for the committee to make. We should appoint the boss of the show very early in the piece, have him up and running like they did in the Olympics, and we carry on from there. 
I really haven't got a lot more to do. I mean, you know, we will spend a billion. It sounds a lot of money. But I think the government will give us a billion. 410 million went to Queensland, Gold Coast. We should have had that, games. We've got a second-rate city in Queensland, Bendigo's. And if we're not careful, Bendigo's going to bid on these games. We don't want Bendigo to be that way. So please come forward, make the suggestion. And if we have to, have the workshops and debate. But the boss, HRH, Prince Edward, will be here in a month and we'll be chatting a lot to him. And he's, he's the one that chairs the committee. So let's hope we, when he leaves here, he can leave with a positive Commonwealth Games for South Australia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Gerard. Thank you. Councillor Clarehan, welcome. Now, members, I don't have any further deputations or public forums before me. Councillor Abia. Just a quick question, Lord Mayor. Uh, in your email, was there any deputations that were declined? If you could note that for the gallery. Uh, yes, there was, members. I did receive a deputy, deputation request from Mr. David Cook, which came in after the prescribed time, which was 12 noon yesterday. Okay, members, I move on. The, can I thank you very much. Now, members, I in all probability will bring this item forward. So the item which you will be debating will be uh, item 10.3, which is Councillor Martin's motion. I will do that, members, just to prepare you. Uh, I will deal with item six first, which is the Adelaide City Council Reconciliation Committee recommendation as the next item. Then in the interest, so we don't retain uh, guests in the, uh, uh, gallery indefinitely, I will then bring forward members that item, which is 10.3. Then I'll return to our, uh, the basis of our agenda thereafter. So members, I'm now going to take you, if I can please, directly to item 6.1 on your agenda, Adelaide City Council Reconciliation Committee. You have a, rec you have a recommendation before you to endorse. Deputy Lord Mayor, you're moving as printed. Councillor Rubio, Deputy Lord Mayor, you wish to speak to the matter? Um, just briefly, I'd uh, really like to congratulate the uh, Reconciliation Committee and the Administration for um, an, a really exceptional wrap, uh, um, which is the Reconciliation Action Plan. Um, it has uh, really taken into account a lot of feedback from all of the councillors, and in particular, I was really pleased uh, to note that it draws attention to employment within the council, within our administration, and also looks at pathways, not only through traineeships and apprenticeships, but also looking at what the university sector is doing in the state. Um, particularly the universities in Adelaide um, are actually working very hard to ensure that there are Indigenous um, graduates and that allows us uh, the opportunity to actually bring graduates into the council. Um, when you're in local government, when you work for the administration, uh, as a graduate with a year or two of local government on your CV, you can pretty much work anywhere in the world and certainly can work anywhere in Australia. So as a, as a starting job or an internship uh, for those graduates, it would be quite an amazing opportunity for them to come into uh, what is a very progressive council in reconciliation. Um, there's some, uh, I, I, I assume everybody has actually had a chance to read it. It did go to the Reconciliation Committee on the 28th of February. Um, it is an exceptional document and does include so many areas um, that we are leading the way uh, for the city, which I'm incredibly proud of. So uh, that's just to say thank you to all of those involved. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Abiyad, you seconded. Do you wish to speak to the matter? Members, I look to you. Any queries, questions or debate? Still reserving your right, Councillor Abiyad? Yes, thank you. DLM, back to you to sum up. Okay. Members, I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 6.1. So, members, I'm now going to take you directly to item 10.3, motions on notice. Councillor Martin, Commonwealth Games of Australia, page 226 of your papers. Councillor Martin, the floor is yours. Uh, I need a second move. You Okay, seconded by Councillor Wilkinson. Welcome, Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Martin, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Lord Mayor. Uh, can I begin by saying uh, that this motion seeks to demonstrate uh, some leadership from the city? Uh, it is an aspirational motion. We are saying 
in, in my view, that we have the skills in this city. We have the people and we have the location as one of the world's most livable cities to stage a massive enterprise like the Commonwealth Games. Now, uh, by adopting this motion, we are not committing tonight to spend any sum of money. That's not the point. In fact, that's not how the process works. Uh, it is the Commonwealth Games Australia organisation and the state government, uh, whichever state government is in office after this weekend, that must strike some kind of agreement, and this in turn goes to the federal government uh, for their approval as well. And at that point is the discussion about infrastructure expenditure and the like. But uh, if we are talking about uh, uh, money and financial arrangements, Lord Mayor, may I just refer members to uh, some of the figures related to the Commonwealth Games and the Gold Coast. Um, the Gold Coast uh, next month is anticipating three quarters of a million visitors. That's 700,000, just short of 700,000. Now, I remind members that last year, this city hosted the Astronautical Conference and there were 3,500 visitors and we thought we were Christmas on a stick. Now, just imagine 200 times the number of people who attended the Astronautical Conference coming to Adelaide to view the Commonwealth Games. Now, the Gold Coast is also hosting 6,600 athletes and team representatives from over 70 countries and territories around the world who are members of the Games. Now, the economic impact will be enormous, and it has been already. The state government has contributed almost $1.5 billion, including infrastructure like light rail to make the Games possible, and the federal government too has chipped in a large sum of money. And the good news for the Gold Coast, and also for Adelaide, if we're successful, is that that doesn't impact on our share of GST. This money is additional. This Commonwealth Games money is additional to the share of GST. It is a huge bonus. Now, uh, the impact on the Queensland economy so far is estimated to be $2 billion. That's $2 billion and the Games haven't started. Now, uh, the biggest impact, uh, Lord Mayor, is as Mr Gerard referred to, uh, legacy. That is the infrastructure that remains. And uh, that's certainly sports infrastructure, no doubt about that. But private, uh, uh, private enterprise also steps in and provides a great deal of infrastructure. And indeed, on the Gold Coast, there's been a huge development of new hotels. In fact, stretching all of the way to Brisbane, and indeed it was the subject of a feature in the weekend Australia. May I just have a few moments more, Lord Mayor? You need the comfort of the Chamber for that. Is there comfort, members? No. I need to see a majority. Do I have one? One, two, three, four. I have it. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Now, it's also been a jobs bonanza for the Gold Coast. Construction jobs, games venues jobs, hospitality jobs, ticketing jobs, security jobs, thousands of new jobs. Adelaide is, as we heard a little while ago, the only mainland state capital to have never hosted a Commonwealth Games. And it is time we did. We deserve the investment. We deserve the infrastructure that will serve the city into the second half of the 21st century. And we deserve the jobs. And the way to get it is to put our hand up tonight and say, we can do it. We can run the Commonwealth Games in the city. That's, that's all this motion says. Now, uh, there will be discussions about money. There's no question about that, but not as a result of this motion. This motion is saying uh, to Australia, to the Games Association, to government, this city is prepared to show leadership and take on the Commonwealth Games. Whether that's 26 or 30 or later, we are a progressive city, not one saying, oh, maybe, but if on condition, we are saying we will stage the Games. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Wilkinson, you second the motion by Councillor Martin. Do you wish to speak to this matter? Uh, yes, no, I think at this stage, um, where uh, it's uh, expressing support in, in principle, I think it's, uh, it's a wonderful thing to be uh, throwing our support and leadership behind. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Abiyad, you had your hand up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm not sure if an amendment was circulated to members, but there was an email sent uh, later this afternoon, and I acknowledge that a few members have already 
stated that they've received it, but I'm happy to read it. It's very short. It's before you, members, on your screens. Has everyone seen what Councillor Abiyar is referring to? This is a proposed amendment which is distributed before this meeting. And just for the sake of the gallery, or now, if you don't mind if I read it, it'll be very brief. Then I'll seek a second, then please read. Excellent. So um, that council, one, provides in principle support to a bid by Commonwealth Games <coughs> Australia for Adelaide to host the Commonwealth Games, full stop. Two, request for the Lord Mayor to write to the relevant federal and state government representatives encouraging them to support such a bid, full stop. Three, asks council administration to bring back a presentation to committee workshop highlighting the attributes and opportunities of such a bid, full stop, end. Thank you. Now, second, Councillor Antic, you've got your hand up first. Back to you, Councillor Abiyad. You Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I'll be brief. I'm not debating here the merit um, and the benefits of the Commonwealth Games to Adelaide. I think this is something that's been highlighted by our deputation, as we've heard. Uh, we've seen that before through examples of other cities, and obviously we've heard uh, from Councillor Martin today uh, what the intention is. Uh, it's our role as council from a governance perspective and a due diligence perspective is to make sure that our taxpayers are covered today, but also in the future. Um, I felt that the uh, support any bid by Commonwealth Games really leaves a bit of exposure there for the City of Adelaide, Lord Mayor. And I think in the motion of by highlighting in principle support and also asking for council administration to bring back a presentation to committee uh, will not only just allow for us to understand this a little bit more and understand the benefits and the opportunities for uh, Adelaide with the Commonwealth Games, but also give an opportunity to many in our community. And I'd like to acknowledge in the, cha in the chamber today that we also have David Cook that's written a very big thesis about this for our city. So I would like to be able to hear from community members. I'd like to have the opportunity of a presentation in our workshop. Uh, and in our committee to hear a little bit more, to understand a bit more about what we're in for and how we can go um, the length to support this over the short, medium and long term. Uh, I also think by the Lord Mayor, taking on point by what are some of the comments that were made before by Councillor Martin, by the Lord Mayor having the ability to write to the federal and state government also, acknowledging the support in principle of the City of Adelaide, also provides an opportunity of leadership uh, from the Lord Mayor and the City, uh, which highlights the importance of what we're trying to achieve here. So look, in no way, uh, shape or form, I think any of us would oppose having the games here. Uh, I don't think it's at any cost. I think it's important that we understand from the City of Adelaide what the impact on our ratepayers could be, and we will have that opportunity uh, presented to us through, through uh, some of the future workshops uh, at this council. Uh, but I've got to ask members to support uh, this amendment. I feel that that is a, a safer option uh, for this council to adopt. Um, and obviously, we'll, I'm hoping we're able to have a workshop very soon, because I understand time is of the essence, uh, where we can invite um, deputies and anyone else that was interested in presenting to council on the merit um, of this specific bit. Thank you, Lord Mayor. You've got something to tell oh, I have, Councillor Abiyad. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so I'm presuming, for just the benefit of your fellow elected members, that your points one, two, and three seek to replace, replace Councillor Martin's points one and two. two. That's correct. That's correct. Thank you. Your second was Councillor Attic. Then I'm going to Councillor Malani. Uh, Councillor well, Attic. I, I, um, I endorse this amendment. I think this provides me a little more comfort than picking a year, which strikes me as being. Um, ambitious at best, but um, certainly in terms of in principle support, uh, I, I think it's a, a terrific idea and it would be nice to see us lead from the front in that sense. Um, we uh, uh, have spent the last 20 years being summarily beaten to our knees in this state and uh, there was a time when we, we uh, stood firm, firmly side by side with Sydney and Melbourne as the second or third uh, state who would proudly support events like the Grand Prix. Uh, an important tennis tournament, uh, and it's time this state got back to doing those sorts of events. So uh, the City of Adelaide can lead the way. I think the concept of in-principle support is a very good one, but I thank Councillor Abiyar for his very sensible uh, approach to, uh, to this motion, which uh, I think, in my view, uh, limits it to uh, being, being part of a workshop. So that gives an opportunity to talk more to the issues. Uh, and, uh, and, to, um, and to talk around those which, uh, which are important and those which are not. I should note, Lord Mayor, that uh, the sum of a billion dollars may seem like a lot, but we spent a billion dollars on a desalinisation plant we haven't turned on yet. Um, so uh, uh, in the terms of uh, spends uh, out there, uh, you would see that money being spent on a worthwhile project like this. So uh, I endorse that and I thank uh, Councillor Abia for his amendment. Thank you, Councillor. I think Councillor Maloney. 
Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just to be a small stickler, in principle, um, should be principal, not a head of a school. Uh, if we could get the spelling correct, that would be great. Um, Correctly said, Councillor. Thank you. Channeling my Councillor Llewellyn Smith. Um, Yes, uh, look, I will support the amendment. I, I think uh, Councillor Martin made a good point about us being taking a leadership um, position on this, and I think that's very important. That's what we, I think actually we're all on the same page about this. What I'm, I guess, uh, interested in the amendment is it gives flexibility beyond just being for one 2026. I think actually, as the deputation highlighted, it's potentially 2030 that is Adelaide's opportunity. Um, and uh, I think also this amendment highlights an action that talks about writing to a particular authority, which is actually uh, the controlling entity when it comes to the bid. So I guess the amendment just hones down on, on um, a, a few key elements there. I do acknowledge the work of David Cook and Rob Gerard both um, on this um, initiative. Um, I actually, uh, as a tourism uh, student many years ago, did my um, end of um, degree thesis on the bid for kale. And uh, so ever since that day, I've, I've shared a, a passion and commitment that Adelaide would host the Commonwealth Games. And as Councillor Martin and Rob Gerard pointed out, South Australia, Adelaide hasn't had that opportunity as yet. And I think we deserve it um, because it is about the opportunity from a tourism and event perspective, but it's the infrastructure that this state will get, which is really what we are looking at here and talking about here and, and what, um, you know, that federal government investment is an opportunity uh, for us to really leverage that. So I think the games have shown to be a way that a city can really grow and develop and, and get better infrastructure. So thanks everyone. I do believe we're on the, the same page here and um, I think we uh, can lead the way in this. So. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Maloney. Members, I'm looking to you. We're speaking about an amendment. Do I have any further debate? Councillor Martin, you'd like to speak to the amendment? Uh, yes, I would, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, I will accept this amendment, uh, and I thank uh, Councillor Aviard uh, for the deletion of 2026 so that uh, the field is open 2026 or 2030, although I do know that the chair of the uh, SA team appeal has said in his letter to all of us today that uh, uh, there is a genuine opportunity to win a bid to host the 2026 Games, but the amendment means that we can uh, plump for either 26 or 30. Um, I'm less enthusiastic about another workshop, particularly one that tells us about the attributes of winning the Games, um, because I'm already converted, I don't need it. But nevertheless, uh, I will accept it. And I, uh, I draw to everyone's attention uh, Mr. Butcher's letter to us, and I think it's important to remind ourselves that to win will require support from all tiers of government and that means local, state and federal, and the in-principle support of the City of Adelaide will help provide the necessary momentum to secure endorsement. Uh, and I hope that everyone uh, will endorse this proposal. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran. Just very briefly, uh, I thank uh, Councillor Abiad and Councillor Antic for their very um, sensible amendment, which changes the whole tone. It's very easy to get up and say, rah, 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 let's have this, let's do this with other people's money. And this amendment acknowledges that it is other people's money. I, I've been on council during a, just before I got on council, I watched with interest our last Commonwealth bid, which we basically, and I stand to be correct, but had no chance of getting, and yet we spent a lot of money, state, federal. You have to pick one, and I think everybody would agree that you're going to win. It's very unlikely we'd win the 26th, but much more likely we'd win the 30th. Um, so it, it's, you know, it's a, in a blaze of glory, some politicians go in announcing things for self-aggrandizement reasons, but sensible politicians sit down, as Councillor Abiad has done, and ask for us to, to, to investigate it properly, because it's not our money. We should be leaders, but we should be sensible leaders. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Members, do I have any further debates? Back to the mover of the amendment, Councillor Abiyad Summer. Just in the uh, brevity time, Lord Mayor, I've summed up. I think everything's been said. Thank you. So, members, I put this amendment before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry the amendment, which takes us back to the substantive motion. Do I have any further debate on the substantive motion? 
Summing up, Councillor Martin. I've got to I put the substantive motion to you as amended. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. So that means, members, we have now carried item 10.3. Lord Mayor, can we have the record reflect unanimous support? But certainly, if that could be reflected, please, in the minutes, Judy and I'd also like to thank Mr. Mr. Gerard and uh, David Cook. Thank you for your correspondence. We'll extend our thanks also to Mark Butcher for his correspondence and undoubtedly be in touch to discuss workshops, etc. Thank you very much. Members, I'm now going to bring you back to the order of your agenda, which takes us to Item 7.1, which is bike share permits and Adelaide free bikes. Members, uh, CEO, do you need to preamble this matter in any capacity before I look to the members? Sorry, Lord Mayor, no, I'm happy to respond to any questions. Okay. So, members, you've got a recommendation before you, which I believe uh, Director Beth Davidson Park may have had a last minute change to it. Does that warrant any discussion, Beth, or would you like me to take it straight to the floor? Uh, straight to the floor, Lord okay. Mayor, happy to respond. Members, it's on the screen. There were some light last minute changes, I believe, to the wording of looking at this point three and point four for you. If you have not seen that, can I encourage you to read that now, please, because the recommendation from your papers has changed subtly. I think we've lost someone in the gallery. And members, if you haven't had an opportunity to read that, I'll then look to the floor for a mover. Okay, Deputy Lord Mayor, you would like to move as printed. Thank you. Members, do I have a second to Councillor Slama? DLM, would you like to speak to this matter? Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I am talking to the amended version on the screen. Um, uh, I think that that really covers it. It talks to the extension of the existing permits, a criteria for determining uh, what we do moving forward, and the fact that any um, extension or change to that will be brought into council for consideration, um, as well as looking after the uh, bike SA, uh, giving a decent amount of time for the Adelaide Free Bike Scheme to wind up at the end of the year. Um, the bike. Uh, I would like to note that and commend the administration for their management so far of the bike share scheme. It appears that we're only a city in Australia that are actually able to manage a bike share scheme appropriately. And, um, and it has been fantastic to see so many people out on their bikes and using the bike paths, particularly during this festival period. Um, and I really have noted how often and how many people have been using it, particularly over the weekend to Wyoming, which was fantastic. Um, so I'd like to uh, commend administration and hopefully that we can continue to have a bike share scheme uh, that is an A to B point uh, that works for us. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Slama, you seconded the motion. Do you wish to speak to it? Reserve my right. Reserving your right. I've then got Councillor Antic and then I've got Councillor Abiyad. Yeah, it's not very clear on the screen. Are we moving with the red changes? That is correct. So what's been moved is what's on your screen, members, which differs from what's on your papers. So there are some inclusions and deletions. Okay, everyone's clear of that? Okay. So, so Councillor Antic. Thank you. Lord, can I um, ask a question then, just in relation to point one, is the intent of that point that the current status quo remain until, uh, until March 2019? Is that what's been... I'll refer that to our CEO, Councillor Antti. Point one, I know. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, thank you. Point one means that the current, as it said, the current permit would continue through to 31st of March 2019. However, with the caveats that we have in place for management. So we still have under the permit uh, the right to revoke at any time. Uh, we still, with, if with non-compliance, we have regular meetings and we have the, um, uh, I guess, the stats that we require from the providers on a monthly basis. So, so point one, if, if point one on its own in isolation would simply leave the status quo as we're currently currently moving with it now until March 2019, as we are currently. Correct. Right. 
Can I, I'd like to ask if this, with the indulgence of the move, if this could be taken in parts. Uh, you would like the members to vote on parts one, two, three, and four separately. Is that what you're asking, Council? No objection from the mover. Any objection from the seconder, Councillor Slam? You have to be voted in parts. I don't understand, Lord Mayor. Is it part one, part two? Point. Let me just take some governance advice in terms of should this be taken in parts? Does the motion actually work? Excuse me. I look to my left. Rudy, should this matter be taken in parts? Should that would that be problematic or not? Through the Lord Mayor, they can't be split up in parts because they're interrelated. Okay, so Councillor Antic, well, I, don't, I don't understand that. Do you have another question? Well, well, why are they interrelated if the answer is that, that point one just becomes the status quo as to what we're doing? Rudy, I'll ask you to shed any further light on that matter and then I'll make a decision. Members, the advice is, Councillor Antic, that they can be taken in parts, but two and three are coupled. So we could take one, then two and three would be voted on together, and then four separately. Deputy Lord Mayor, you still comfortable to be taken in parts? Councillor Slammer? Okay, we'll take it in parts. I suspect it won't make any difference anyway, Lord Mayor, but um, I, I do have some reservations about extending this beyond what we're currently doing uh, for reasons of made clear before. I, I like the scheme. I think it's going quite nicely at the moment. I think that the operators are generally very respectful at this time, but I'm really concerned by an addition of numbers into the system. We've seen a lot of outcry in Sydney and Melbourne uh, as to uh, the manner in which those bikes are being uh, strewn across the city. Um, and I think the more bikes we throw into the system, the more difficulties uh, we will have in monitoring those and, uh, and, the, and the operators will have in monitoring those. So I'm really reluctant to do anything more than we're doing at the moment. It's a niche market at the end of the day, uh, and uh, I don't see it needing to be um, extended, but I suspect that <coughs> that will be a fairly minority position in this room, Lord Mayor. So um, uh, I would like to see the uh, scheme continued as it presently is, and I'm happy to authorise the um, uh, CEO to negotiate the current contract with Bike SA as amended, but I, I don't support any extension of the, uh, of the scheme. So I'll support one and four, I guess, on that basis. Okay, Councillor Anthony, unless I'm reading this wrongly, though, the point three would actually suggest that now, it's all, now that it's been uh, changed prior to becoming a motion. So that if you read point three, it notes the future assessment extension of the on street activity permits for OFO and OBike dockless bike share operators will be assessed during the above, using the above criteria and referred to council for consideration and approval. Does that not give you comfort? It's still commonplace growing the bikes in the system. But it would come back to council for any final decision. So that should give you the comfort you're looking for, surely. 
suspect there's going to be a minority position anyway. <laughs> We'll move on. I don't think I'll get much support on this one. So on. Now, members, I've had Zab, Councillor Abiyad, then I'm going to Councillor Clarehan, then I'm going to Councillor Hendon. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, um, I speak in, um, in support of this, especially with regards to one, two, and three. Um, I think it's exciting when we see opportunities where external non government organisations are able to come into the market. Uh, and provide a solution uh, for ratepayers, for visitors of the city, without the ratepayers having to fall the bill. I think that's exactly what the roles of governments are, is to provide an opportunity for the likes of the um, O-Bike and O-4 operators to come into the city to provide that level of service and support at a really cheap rate, which is acceptable to the market, where we're not having to <coughs> look after the system, where we're not having to expend money on the system. And I note to council members that we've um, previously spent uh, we, we've got in the budget about $120,000 uh, a year in the way of consideration uh, to support the uh, bike SA or the current uh, Adelaide Free uh, bike scheme. Uh, so to be able to have that back in the kitty is a really important thing for our ratepayers because there will not be a service gap in the market because it's already been filled by the private sector. And that's exactly what we need to do as a council. We will not need to be interfered with entrepreneurs. If there's a market there, we should let the business do it and we should get out of the way. Um, I'm not I don't understand the reason to why we need to, in point four, extend the current bike SA um, Adelaide Free Bikeway to the 31st of de December, given that we already have uh, in the market uh, the, uh, the private operators. Uh, we are highlighting, unless the Deputy Lord Mayor, by striking out the money of $60,000, they strike out any financial support from Council. I'm not quite sure what the intention of the motion is there. That's why I raised that before. I was a bit confused there, Lord Mayor, because it says it authorises the extension of the current contract, but then it takes the money out. So Would I'm you like clarity from administration please. to assist you, Councillor Abbey? Yeah, if you don't mind. Please. Okay, CEO, can I throw that to you? Point four clarification is the extension and the rationale behind it? Yep, three, Lord Mayor. As stated, it really just provides an opportunity to um, negotiate with Bike SA and, uh, and local businesses to determine. Um, the future of that scheme, whether that hands over to another agency or, or not. So it just provides that opportunity to take those conversations. But the $60,000, that's my question, sorry, uh, through you or Mayor to the CEO, um, the $60,000 has been struck out from this motion. I don't want us to contribute financially to Bike SA and the free Adelaide Free Bike uh, Program now that we've got private operators in the market. So does that strike out of the 60,000 indicate there was no money spent? Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, thank you. The, what we're suggesting is that the scheme continue as is from July to December 31, and that would be $60,000 being half a, a year. But that's been struck out of the budget. No, it hasn't been struck out of the budget. It will be for consideration in the 1819 budget. What was removed, Councillor, was that those last two sentences were really superfluous to the recommendation. And it notes in inside the report that it'd be subject to um, consideration as a part of the 1819 budget. And it's discussed in the body of the report as well. Sorry, I'm just going to get clarity from the mover. Is that your intention? because I don't think it is. Uh, well, I actually read it that that was no longer required, that we would just run the scheme to the, because that budget note had been taken out of the recommendation. So I read it the same way you did. Yep, so we've got confusion. Through you, Lord Mayor. Through you, Lord Mayor, that was certainly the intent, <laughs> but we're in your hands for the decision on that. Well, well now I need to default back to you. I need to get clarity on what we're moving, because I've the mover has just indicated what she moved is what she intended, not she intended to move. So. Okay, members, let me assist you. So it would appear that what you have before you now uh, states that should you approve this motion in its current wording, that part of your 1819 budget build, which you will ultimately approve prior to 30th of June this year, will include a sum of $60,000 to perpetuate bike SA through to the 31st of December 2018. That, that's clear, Beth? Okay. So through you, Lord Mayor, adoption of item four as table would um, would necessitate a budget bid. So it's committed to council to 60,000. So Bike SA cannot operate without council's financial support. That's the inference. 
it says, time. It says the mover still prepared to move as printed? Um, or? Yes, I'm still prepared to okay, move. So just in speaking, look, I'll be speaking against this, Lord Mayor. Um, I think we can actually assist in transitioning the program out. And now that we've got private operators in the city that are advertising, that are pushing through, I feel like we as a council now are also competing with the private market. So in one hand, we come and give a license to the OFOs and to the O-bikes to come and operate in our city. And then on the other hand, we're still funding another program where people can still get free bikes, which makes their program unviable, which hence they may exit our city as a result. So look, I don't understand when governments operate in two specific, in two separate, um, in two separate areas. For me, it needs to be very clear messaging. Uh, we need to finish our current uh, Adelaide free bikeway scheme. If it needs to be transitioned, it's fine, let's call it that. But I would imagine within a two to three months transition is enough. I don't want to expend more ratepayers funds uh, on this program, especially when we have private operators that have entered the market and we've given them a permission to enter the market. So I have I have concerns with that. So look, if, it, if the motion is going to stay as it is, I'll probably, we, with Council Antic, I'll probably support one, two and three, but I would not support uh, four at this stage. Of the day. Okay, Councillor, so I'll remember you, you are voting on this matter in parts. You're voting on part one, part two and three are coupled. You'll be voting on them together, then you'll be voting on part four. Uh, thank you, Councillor Abiyad. Uh, Councillor Clearahan, followed by Councillor Hender. Councillor Clearahan. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. A question first. Has council administration undertaken any consultation with the community about the uh, intent to stop the free bike program? Beth, thanks. Through you, Lord Mayor. Uh, not at this stage, no, Councillor. We have, however, engaged with Bike SA um, and they are supportive of dockless bikes and have indicated though that they would appreciate a funded extension for six months so they can wind down that business and undertake any transition as required. But that's the only consultation we've undertaken so far. So at what point would we actually consult with the community um, besides those people that actually have some of the free bikes? Through you, Lord Mayor. Um, we understand Bike SA have consulted with the, I think it's 18 business, Peter, yeah, the 18 business who currently host the bike. General community? We have not engaged with general community as yet, no. So it seems rather strange to me that we're actually making a decision before we've even consulted the general community and the users of the bikes. I understand that a lot of, I'll let you answer that one. Do you want to just, just a comment, if I yeah. could, Councillor, through you, Lord Mayor, is that until we have a decision, we haven't entered into detailed discussions with Bike SA as yet. It's our understanding that Bike SA would want to deal with each of those business to see if there is a way to continue the provision of the scheme without council funding. Do we, do we know, in relation to that, do we know, um, would we say that the majority of the free bikes are used by people who are visiting the businesses or staying at the businesses and very few members of our resident population would use the free bikes? Have we got that information? I'm just wanting to make sure that if we have residents living and students living in the city of Adelaide, um, that they're not just going to suddenly have the bikes kicked out from under them. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, um, we understand that about 20% of users of free bikes are residents. Any more detail than that, we would have to inquire and come back. So that's one in five people, one in five of the users have no idea that we're about to cease the, the free bike scheme and they're not being invited to make any comment at all. I have had one comment from someone saying, I would, I don't want to share my data with those companies. Um, I want to use the free bikes. Um, another has said, well, I don't wish to, you know, wish to pay. You, you fund the free bus service 
Um, and now you're going to stop funding the free bike. Isn't it all the same? Aren't you trying to make it the city more accessible? Aren't you trying to get people around the city and take cars off the road? Councillor, can I assist you? Are you asking questions? Well, or, I should, or, or are you no, I've now gone into actually speaking to the motion. Okay, you're speaking I'm really to worried that we're actually making these decisions without any consultation with the one in, in five users who live in the city of Adelaide. That's, that's not our usual way of doing things. So I'm just wondering, are we jumping the gun here without any consultation, without any feedback? Yes, we know businesses, especially I expect accommodation businesses, would find that as a very attractive um, uh, business offering to say to potential um, uh, visitors, oh, we've got free bikes as well. I mean, I know that the free bike program was something that was embraced by a lot of international students. Some of them had actually said, we chose Adelaide because we love the free bike scheme. So I know these other bikes aren't that expensive, but you know, I just find it strange that we haven't done any consultation. Um, another thing I wanted to say about this is that um, it's great to see that we're actually collaborating with other councils, that we're consulting with them. Um, it makes really good sense. Uh, my only concern is that we talk about, um, or from that meeting, there was um, discussion about selecting an operator and all my alarm bells went off. And I know we've got people concerned about the number of operators offering up bikes, but at the same time, here we are, we're offering it out to the market and then we're going to monopolize, we're going to set up a monopoly situation by choosing just one provider. I think there's real danger in, in choosing one provider. It had operator dash operators. So I, I just, just, I'll like, just help, I'll help you with the debate, Council. There are when we're talking about the bike share program, there are two operators I currently, currently but in twelve the months moment. time it may be different. And I just want to flag that there's no way I would support a monopoly in those in the share in the dockless bike providers. Um, so and I leave it at that. So members, to assist you before I hand to Councillor Hender, Councillor Maloney, Councillor Martin and Councillor Wilkinson, you will be voting on this matter in parts. This motion addresses two different matters in itself. One of them is bike share and one of them is free bike. Free bike only pertains to point four. When you vote on point four, you will be making a decision, depending on which way you vote, as to whether Bike SA completes its tenure on the 30th of June or it completes its tenure on the 31st of December. Is that correct, CEO? Yes. By inference, if you vote positively, there will be a budget bid of some $60,000 in your 18-19 financial year budget to sustain it, which may give it time to transition or whatever it needs to do. If you don't do that, it, I understand, will finish at the end of this financial year. That's the decision you're making tonight, members. So I'm now going to go to Councillor Hender, followed by Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just very briefly, I'm going to support all four um, elements of this motion um, and for the following reasons. Firstly, I think the bike share scheme has been a great success and I congratulate our administration on the way that they've managed it. I understand that administrations from councils across the country are coming to talk to us about how we've done it because we're the only people who are doing it really well. So I think that's a great outcome. Um, <laughs> Um, but I do, I do also think that our bike share scheme, sorry, our free bike scheme, is a much loved part of our city, and I think that there is, um, we need to give an opportunity for, to make that transition. Uh, I suspect they are at this stage uh, um, providing services to different demographics, and I don't, but, but I don't think we necessarily know that. Um, and I think we need to give the, both the providers of the bike share scheme, that is the businesses that, that, that have it, and the, the users of the, sorry, the free bike scheme the opportunity to do it. It also gives us an opportunity to see how the um, OFO and the other bike share, uh, the share bike schemes settle in, um, whether they maintain their costing at the same way that they do now, because that may impact on our decision, a long-term decision about the free bikes. So I know we're saying we'll give it to the end of the year. That gives us an, op an opportunity for everything to settle in. It gives an opportunity for those people who rely on the free bikes to get used to the new scheme. 
I don't begrudge $60,000 for people to be able to use free bikes around the city. I think that's a great way to spend our money, frankly. So I'm keen that we, um, we fund as many bikes as we can, give the, give the, opposition, give the uh, appropriate time for a transition and, um, and uh, support all the bikes that we can. Thank you, Councillor Hendo. I'll take you to Councillor Milani, followed by Councillor Martin. Councillor Milani. Thank you. I just want to pick up on a point of Councillor Abiyad's, um, a, a question, if I may. Um, the criteria that's been set specifies a number of usage which will determine how many bikes the two operators can insert into the market. Um, but at the same time, we've got the free bikes for another six months. Are we factoring in to that criteria that we are actually putting an alternative into the marketplace? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, yes, I'd say that we are, especially as to the best of our knowledge, we really are appealing to different demographics. I think the other thing that we, we take into account as well is busyness of the city, quieter times of the city, um, the seasonal aspects will have an impact as well. Um. I, I take your point on different markets and, and maybe there's no evidence of any of it really. We, we don't, it's all anecdotal, but we are picking up on Councillor Abiad's point. We're saying that they can increase the number of bikes they put into the marketplace if, they, if there's a certain number of usage. But we're also putting our own bikes into the marketplace, which will impact the usage. So I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I just, I just think we need to factor that into into the, the, the formula. I mean, it, it is, they counteract each other, in my view. Uh, through you, Lord um, Mayor. Uh, Peter's just made the comment as well, Councillor, that we have seen a decrease in the use of the free bike scheme since the Donkless bikes have commenced. So whether that would equalise um, there's no real way of, of projecting that. I think, you know, a lot of it is anecdotal at the minute and we're largely in uncharted waters. I think our suggestion of, you know, reassessing every three months, um, the criteria, if we can, of meeting as we continue to do regularly with the providers, I'd suggest is the way we need to continue for at least a year to see if it starts to equalise. I guess my point is that we are, you're, you're, if they wanted to put more bikes into the system, and we've given them a criteria, but we're also providing another product in the marketplace, it's going to affect their KPIs and their performance. So we have to just factor that in because it's unfair to say, well, you didn't meet the criteria, but we've actually also got another product in the marketplace. So there's a competitive, it, it will impact, you just said, it could, it could do it the way. The other thing is I note in here um, in post the end of December um, around about the assets of the bikes. They're saying that they're, um, I mean, I remember for Velo, um, uh, we, Velo City, we Council, invested. Council, can I assist you also? You're, you're in between asking questions and debating. Are you still asking questions? Well, I'm, you know, I'm not, I don't plan to speak another time on there. So. Um, I just want to ask though, we're talking about 60k investment, but we've also got, we've, we invested um, a fair bit when we did buy the extra bikes for Velocity. So, and that wasn't that long ago. What is the asset worth? Because we're talking about giving them to the community. I just want to know what our process is around that. We've got 120, 160, was it, bikes owned and 60 owned by Bike SA. They're four to seven years old, nearing the end of their life, and then the plan is to give them away when we don't use them anymore. Can you talk about that process? Through you, Lord Mayor. The, the bikes, as we've noted here, are nearing, if not already past their useful lives. So in terms of asset value, would be nothing, because they've, they've gone through their life, they've returned on, on our investment. Our proposal, to start the negotiations with Bike SA is that we would continue maintenance during that six month period or Bike SA would after the agreement. Bikes would then be handed over to providers who have agreed that they want to continue providing but after the 31st of December we would not be funding that. So I would suggest those bikes over time will, well we would be gifting them um, past their asset life and over time those bikes will 
continue under maintenance or not. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, I'll go to Councillor Martin, followed by Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I must say, it, it's always surprising to me that whenever we come onto the subject of bikes, we get bogged down. There is just this mood in this chamber that's not reflected as far as I can see in the constituency. And I always look over here into the gallery and the eyes glaze over, as indeed do others. And Councillor Antico I notice it's on the internet, so it's not actually all that impressive. When you talk, how I talk. Is it not? <laughs> Councillors, Councillor Martin, please continue debating. Lord Mayor, look, I, the Commonwealth Games proposal that got up, I, I avoided mentioning that the Games actually have cycling because I felt sure it would go down if I did. That's how bad the, the, the feeling is in this chamber. Um, look, <laughs> Councillor, please continue, please. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Look, uh, it's pretty simple. All that's being proposed by the administration is that in the transition of the free bike scheme, that they have the capacity to negotiate with Bikes SA, which supports our dockless bike system, that is the free enterprise system, in an orderly fashion. There are 18 businesses in, I think it's, no, it's two, 220 bikes, 18 locations, many of them businesses in the city of Adelaide. So we'd be saying to a lot of these businesses, that is private enterprise, well, stuff you, it's all over on the 30th of June. This provides an orderly exit from the market, and indeed the market will then operate in a free fashion from the end of the year. What's crook about that? It seems pretty straightforward to me. And I must say that the Doppler's bike scheme, despite the reservations of others, seems to be working extraordinarily well. All of those forecasts of bikes on roofs, in trees, in the river, have not come to pass. 65 complaints, which constitutes 0.17% of all hires. And most of those were not about bikes in trees. They were about bikes that were there for too long, which is easily fixed with the, uh, the regimen the administration has designed. And can I just put this into perspective? The bike scheme, which operates in this city with two operators, has 300 bikes, compared to 2,500 in the city of Melbourne, 5,000 in the city of Sydney, 2,000 on the Gold Coast. That is, the city of Adelaide has 0.3% of the bikes in the other cities of Australia. What is this all about? And even if we didn't want those bikes, we can't stop them because there are agreements that those bike operators have with five other metropolitan councils in the, uh, the whole of metropolitan Adelaide to operate the schemes. And they can pass through Adelaide, those bikes. They can even be left here. And what's more, more local government areas are negotiating for those dockless bikes to pass through and be in the city. I just don't understand what it's about. The time has moved on. It certainly has. Thank you very much, Councillor. I now go to Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, yes, I agree with Councillor Abiat's point about um, the, uh, the people who have actually established businesses which are providing the, uh, the bike um, the bikes, and I, I don't think it's fair to those um, those uh, uh, people who've established those businesses. Obviously, we've sort of helped kickstart things, but um, I don't think it's fair for us to be offering a free free service whilst they're trying to uh, run a business. Um, we've had a period of, of, of uh, you know, we effectively will have a period of transition anyway, um, and. Uh, so really, it's just out of that concern for, for fairness to those, um, to those, uh, you know, entrepreneurial businesses who have established a, a pay for bike system, uh, which um, I think we should be um, just uh, uh, letting the funding run out at the end of the financial year. So it's for that reason that I support Councillor Abia's uh, view on this. Thank you. Now, Councillor Slava, you reserved your right, but I sense you want to speak. I did, and I uh, shim on the last one, and I did that on purpose, Lord. I think it was, a, Lord Mayor. I think it was a good debate, um, but I just would encourage members to vote for all four points. I think it's been well thought, th th thought through. Um, the free bike um, system has been part of our brand, and in the student circles, in the university circles, in the, in the attraction circle, it has been part of our brand. It would be naive to just chop it off. 
um, straight away. Um, Lord Mayor, there are many small businesses, as has been said, that have used this, the, the free bike systems to, to, to cooperate and network amongst each other. And they've got marketing materials out and information on websites, all that sort of stuff needs to be updated and changed. And I think a little bit more time would help those businesses out as well. Um, it might also give Bike SA the opportunity to change a business model. Who knows? They might uh, come up with something where they electrify their bikes or sell their bikes to AFO and um, things change. They might turn them into smart things. So th 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 it's a good backup system for us at the moment. If you look at the amount of startups that fail, I think 80% of startups fail, 20% remain for the next year. Who knows? AFO is sustainable. Well, we may just have something that we, we, we've still got in the back pocket if that happens. So it just makes sense to vote for all the points and I encourage members to do so. Thank you, Councillor. Back to you, Deputy Lord Mayor, to sum up. Summed up, Lord Mayor. Well done. Members, I put this before you. I, no, I'm not. I'm going to put this before you in parts. So, members, I'm going to put part one before you for the vote. Those in favour of part one. Those against part one. Yes, you can. Part one is now carried. And I, that was unanimously. Uh, members, I now put part two and part three before you. Those in favour of parts two and three. Those against. So part two and part three carry. Those members voting in favour of parts Sorry, two. Parts two and three of item seven point one, please rise. Councillor Milani, Councillor Wilkinson, Councillor Aviad, Councillor Hender, Councillor Slammer, Councillor Martin, Councillor Clarahan, Deputy Lord Mayor, and Councillor Moran. So members, finally I put part four before you. Those in favour? Those against? So members, part four carries. Those members voting in part in favour of part four of item 7.1, please rise. Councillor Milani, Councillor Hender, Councillor Slammer, Councillor Martin, Councillor Clarahan, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Murray. So members, part four carries and of course so did part three prior to. So members, that motion is now completed. I'll now turn your attention to item 7.2 in your papers, which is page 10, the Adelaide Town Hall Civic Area Management Plan to note and approve. <laughs> Councillor Martin, you are? Um, moving an alternative motion, Lord Mayor. If you could please share with your fellow elected members, Councillor Martin, what you're moving. Um, to first, the recommendation of the Adelaide Town Hall Civic Area Management uh, plan pending the provision of uh, plans and costings. Sorry. You can say it again, please, Councillor Martin. Um, defers the recommendations of the Adelaide Town Hall Civic Area Management Plan pending the provision of plans, costs, and timeframes. We'll wait until that gets accurately captured. I'll just deal with this, Deputy Lord Mayor, unless you have a question. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, we have a second. Okay, so Kylie, have you ac accurately captured Councillor Martin? Could you look to your screen just to confirm, please, and assist? Uh, it should be the first, the recommendations of the Adelaide Town Hall Civic Area Management Plan pending the provision of plans, comma, costings and time frames. Lord, okay, your seconder is Councillor Clarahan. Question. You can answer the question. Yes, you can, DLM, and then I'm going to go back to Councillor Martin. What's your question, DLM? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, just before we get to that um, uh, amendment, um, could administration please um, talk to, to that in terms of my understanding is that the plan is there and then the uh, designs and costings and timeframes and everything comes into council as we go through the plan. Is that not correct? 
Okay, so can I refer that to the CEO? Then I'm going to go back to Councillor Martin and then Councillor Clarehan. So, no, CEO? Mayor, with all due respect, the answer is yes, the his motion is unacceptable because it's ultra violent. We're waiting for the answer. Through you, Lord Mayor. This document is an overarching document and um, any such works are normally passed through the Civic Recognition Working Group, at which time priorities, timeframes, costings are generated for referral to Council and Council on a as-needs basis will determine funding or, and acceptance of the project or otherwise. So that's an overarching document at this time. Okay, that doesn't necessarily represent it being ultra-virus, so I will accept this, but members, you can debate this on its merit. Councillor Martin, the floor is yours. You've moved to an alternate motion. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. The floor is yours. Look, uh, I don't have a problem with the, uh, the Swan Group Pen Glaze uh, report. It is detailed. It does recommend further reports in the things which are missing. And that is details of furnishings and what's to happen to them, flooring, earthquake proofing, all of those things need to be covered at some stage. But I would like this document um, uh, deferred pending um, uh, some idea of the, the costs involved. These planned investments at pages 64 and 65 include considerably expanding the Lord Mayor's office area, refurbishing the Lord Mayor's waiting area, refurnishing the CEO's office with new cabinet work and replacing air conditioning. And the big one is a complete makeover of the elected member uh, offices to include a new lounge, reception, etc., and no costings and plans. And yet those plans and the costings are available. They were in the design room for all of us to see. And you were with me, Lord Mayor, when we viewed those. The total cost, as I recall, was $1.6 million. Uh, that is if we took option two for the second part. Now, $1.6 million in principle approved by this document. And let me just make clear, it says that we are noting that it's presented to us for approval. So the, the works that are nominated on those pages 64 and 65 are effectively approved. Now, um, I, I understand the Can counter I just interject for one second? Sorry. Look, I, mean, I just realised, as from Bupeng, like, uh, there's a report in here by a client of mine on declare a conflict of interest and leave the chamber. Thank you for your declaration, Councillor Maloney. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Council leaves the chamber. Now you can recommence, Councillor Martin. Now, uh, the argument might well be that we uh, aren't going to spend the money until we can afford to, that the plans are coming back or whatever, but the approval in principle follows the adoption of this. That's what we're being asked to do. Um, and if we adopt the whole report, then we are in principle approving those things. And I might add that there's a whole raft of things that are approved in there as a consequence of this that aren't major capital works, but which are nevertheless substantial, including replacement of carpets in areas, uh, including uh, additional works on toilets and the like. Now, um, if you add that $1.6 million and all the other, it's a very expensive capital program. And all I'm asking is that uh, we exercise a bit of prudential caution and ask for those costings because that's what we're here to do, to make sure that the expenditure is appropriate. If people wanted uh, a rubber stamp, they would have gone to office works instead of uh, electing us. And look, just a, a final footnote. Uh, I, I draw the attention of members um, uh, to a passage 3.3.3 on page 38, and it says essentially that council will be bypassed in respect of some matters. Now, I, I, I'd like that further explained. I'd like a discussion about that um, because it's not clear to me what the intention is there uh, and at what level that a, a bypass occurs. So all I'm asking, Lord Mayor, is can we just have a bit more detail to accompany the report in order to be sure that we're making the right decision? Now, Councillor Martin, would you like clarity on 3.3.3 .3 now, or is that something you're inferring you'd like to explore amongst other matters in a workshop? Oh, uh, I'd like to explore it, and uh, I don't believe that um, it would satisfactorily here. We've uh, spent a lot of time talking about bikes. Okay, thank you. So your second was Councillor Clarehan, followed by reserving the right, followed by Councillor Head, the Deputy Lord Mayor, and Councillor Moran. Um, I'm wondering whether the. Move of the amendment might be willing to, to do this. I mean, to, for me, when I read uh, paragraph two, it says adopts the management plan 
for adoption, oh, sorry, approves the management plan, blah, 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 for adoption to inform and prioritise future plan capital works. So it's not intending to be prescriptive, it's, it's intending to be a background document that we'll go to when, if and when we're going to do some priority works. I wonder whether if we just change that word from approves the Adelaide Civic Management Plan to notes the Adelaide Civic Management Plan, for, to, to inform and prioritise, whether the uh, council would be happy with that. It is a valuable background document. A lot of good work has been done by... <laughs> so it's going back to the original motion, um, Councillor Martin, and saying rather than approves for adoption, just say notes to inform and prioritise future capital works. So you move that. Oh, I'm happy with that, um, but can I do that one now? Yes, you can. So what... Okay, so, Councillor Hedden, you're asking, you're suggesting... That's not at all like you said. I don't think you're going to go or adoption. Councillor Hedden, can I just be clear? I'm happy to move that as an amendment. You can do that? Take out for adoption. You're moving an amendment? Okay, so let's put the amendment on the screen. I'll screen, I'll seek a seconder, you debate it. Okay, so it's the original motion with the following words removed, also with the word approved turned to notes, and the words for adoption removed. And if I can get a second, I'll just quickly speak to it. Councillor Moran, is your seconder? Great. So all I'm, all I'm trying to do, and I think Councillor Mark is trying to do the same thing, is we want to make sure that, or I want to make sure this document, which has done a lot of good work, which has set out a background for us, is there. It's there to call on when we need it. It's a reference document. It's not something that commits us to anything. We go to it when we want to do the next bit of work. We have a look at it and see what's, what the uh, experts have suggested, and then we decide whether it's a sensible thing or not. Uh, I think by doing uh, maybe those simple amendments to the original uh, motion, we can achieve that outcome, which I think is the outcome that Councillor Martin is also trying to achieve. So, members, you are now debating an amendment. Your second of the amendment is Councillor Moran, then it was Councillor Aviard. So that list of members that I had to speak up on the substantive motion has now changed. I've now got DLM followed by Councillor Wilkinson. So I now go to Councillor Moran, who yes. says... Look, I don't think it's anything like the Councillor... Um Councillor Martin said, I think it, I was happy, it's actually just the original motion, but made clearer. What Councillor Martin wants to do is hold everything up. And, and per, I don't know whether it's on purpose, but misunderstand the whole nature of this motion. The whole plan is the whole scoping of the plan, which we've all read, we've all gone through. It is the wish list, it's the dream um, do up at the council hall, it's the Rolls Royce. When we then go into costings and practicalities, we then cherry pick which ones we'll do. It is clear to every single person in the room that that was the motion. And I'm sick and tired of people picking, misunderstanding, not picking up a phone, although apparently he's been into the Lord Mayor's office and walked through it. Everybody else here was clear on this motion. I'm sick and tired of this council wasting their time on games and silly shilly shelling from Mainly one councillor. Lord Mayor, look, I object to this personal sure. attack. I, what, what's it all about? Would you explain to me? Uh, I think it's possibly self-explanatory, but we will continue Thank on. You, Lord so we will now go on to Councillor Aviard, followed by the Deputy Lord Mayor, followed by Councillor Wilkins. Councillor uh, uh, Lord Mayor, I don't support the um, amendment by Councillor Martin or the change by Councillor Hender. And the reason is very clear. We ask administration to do something. They go and do it. They come back to us with recommendations and approvals, and then we tell them, we'll just note it and put it aside. I mean, this is the process. So we talk about wasting money. It's just right there. This is Councillor Martin wasting money, deferral after deferral, after I'm not sure, after I'm not certain. This is not what this council stands for. So when we give an order to administration to execute, they've done their job, they've come back, they've executed. They've just explained very clearly at the beginning of this motion, which could have saved us a good half an hour of debate, that their intention after coming up with this to come back piece by piece, asking council for funding, that's what we heard, and you still accepted the motion, Lord Mayor. I mean, if I was in your position, I would have accepted the motion in the first place. But that is what we heard. So the other thing that elected members don't seem to understand is we are a capital city. We can't sit in wishy-washy offices. It may be everyone except one. Councillors, Councillor Abbey are speaking. Um, the, the issue here, Lord Mayor, is we're a capital city. There are renewals required in offices. There are things we need to do. 
we, we meet people in these areas and it's important for future council to walk into a place that looks the part. I mean, if you look at some of the offices in, in, in this building and some of the elected members offices in some of the other areas, they're a disgrace lord now. We're not here representing us, we're here representing the city and future councils deserve a little bit better. When we're improving some of the areas, it's important to have a full rollout document as we've got today. So this wishy-washy approach of constantly trying to go back and forth and draft it, notes, what does noting mean? We've noted it, then what? What's going to happen now? What clear direction does our administration have from this motion board now? Nothing. It doesn't see approval of the plan. It doesn't talk about expenditure. It doesn't talk about anything more than that. Noting. So we've asked someone to go and design everything, do everything, and then they've come back to us and say, oh, that's great work. Note it. Put it aside. Then what? Uh, I'm just sick of this. Uh, it's really important, I think, that we endorse the motion as recommended that we've had presented to us today, because that's what this city deserves and this is what this council deserves. If the council believes that there's too much to expend or there isn't a return on investment or there's a problem, that's a decision for later. This is not what this report's asking us to do. So I'd ask members to not support this change or this amendment that's before us and to not support the amendment before and to default back to the recommended position uh, and to the original motion because it doesn't commit us financially. All it does is it commits us in a way that, yep, what we've done is great work and at a later stage, those bits and pieces will come back and as council wishes, they can proceed with the plan or without. That's all it says. So I don't understand why anyone would want to change the original recommendation. I have no idea why Councillor Martin, except to waste half an hour of our time. Okay, so councillors, you are debating an amendment put forward by Councillor Hinder. We have now got the Deputy Lord Mayor followed by Councillor Wilkins. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I appreciate what Councillor Hinder was trying to do there, um, but I was actually put my hand up to move the recommendation as written, um, uh, partly because I am on the uh, Civic uh, Committee. and. The, that plan is a, an overall plan. It is there to inform and prioritise the decisions that come back to Council, just as every other decision that we've made has come back to Council, including um, samples, etc., and paint swatches and everything else. And I think that uh, it's an amazing, it's a fabulous report, and I think that the administration has done a wonderful job in over the last few years in bringing our town hall back up to the standard that it currently is. And um, the amount of um, acknowledgement and and um, compliments we get for the at Queen Adelaide room uh, for the chambers themselves and now the, the hallway, which I must admit when it was first done I went, oh, but I actually really like it now. Um, they've done a really good job and uh, this will give us the overall plan, the individual parts will come back to us with costings, with timeframes and with everything that we need to make the decision on that. It doesn't mean that we wholesale go through it and it's done without us ever having uh, a say again. So I uh, support the original recommendation. Okay, so you're debating the amendment. I take you now to Councillor Wilkinson, then I had Councillor Anting. Is that correct, Councillor Anting? Yep, Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I support Councillor Hendel's um, amendment. And um, just to, to take one example, the, the original motion was just to support everything that was in this report. There's, there's a lot to it. But just to take one, in, one area, area G93, which is the circulation space south of the, um, of the Queen Adelaide Road. Now, just look at how the Queen Adelaide Road ended up after I and my fellow elected members took a particular interest in how it would have happened very, very differently had we just ticked off the first thing that was put to us. And uh, to, to take just that as one example, you know, that space which, which under G93 on page 28 of the report talks about being originally the laneway between the Prince Albert Hotel and the Town Hall, now there's a tremendous opportunity for that that space to be done in a manner which actually uh, tells the story how that was an outside laneway. You know, might have a slate floor rather than carpet because it was a laneway, it wasn't an internal part of the thing. The walls under the plaster there are external 
walls, that blue stuff underneath the thing. Part of that story could be told. That circulation space, which this refers to just being used for table and chair storage, which is extraordinary waste, um, that actually leads from the main town hall for it straight to the main the main entrance where the public come into this chamber. So that's a tremendous opportunity for that rather than being a table and chair storage, which if we just kicked it off as a thing, then that's we would have been oh you've already agreed to that. But you know there, there's just one example of one area within the town hall if you look at it a bit more closely how how um, how we need to be scrutinising these things and noting it so that it then does come back for us to, to look at more carefully as it, as it comes up in a priority order. But for us to just sort of sign off the whole box and dice, I, I would, as an elected member, uh, um, be concerned about being told subsequently, oh, well, you've already signed that off on the uh, such and such a date in March 2018, you've already approved it, and therefore we've already finished the final detailed design of that area because you approved it on this particular date. So that's the reason why I support uh, Councillor Henders uh, amendment on this, and that's just I hope that example helps. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. And members, we do have a number of matters to get through tonight, so can I just encourage all members to either speak for it or speak against it, provide your reasoning as to why or why not, and we'll get this meeting moving along. Councillor Antic, the floor is yours. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I can summarise that very nicely for you. I um, support the original motion, and I do so because there was absolutely no necessity to go down this path. Um, this is maybe half an hour of this council's time. There are staff members sitting around who are otherwise being who are otherwise being paid. You are not speaking. And um, at the end of the day, uh, we sit 48 weeks a year. Uh, it's about four hours of time, which equates to something in the order of 200 odd hours. Do the maths. Don't know, but we could end up spending half a million dollars over the course of a uh, over term just simply on administrative time simply with these sorts of uh, distractions. This is entirely unnecessary. The original motion was perfectly reasonable uh, as the reasons enunciated by councillors Moran and Arbyard. Um, you know, half an hour of my life will never get impacted by me, so I'll support the original, which we could have done originally. Thank you, Councillor Antic. Now, members, any further debate on the proposed amendment? Councillor Martin? Yes, look, Lord Mayor, I, I will be brief and say, if you endorse what uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor was saying, that is, that this is to inform and prioritise what comes before Council, then you'll accept Councillor Henders' amendment. It's very clear. It just says that the previous approved it for adoption. It's straightforward. Just endorse the motion of Councillor Hender and all of the concerns that I have, that Councillor Wilkinson has, that Councillor Hender has, will be addressed. Councillor Hender, you're summing up. Members, I put this amendment before you. Those in favour of the amendment? Those against the amendment? So the amendment fails, which takes us back to the substantive motion. Can we move the original be put, Lord Mayor? I need a seconder for that, please. Councillor Antic had hand up first. So members, can we please put the original motion back on the screen, Kylie? Okay, I'm just waiting for it to appear on the screen so everyone knows precisely what they're about to make a decision about because there won't be any debate. Ms. Councillor, I'll be able to move for it to be put. Cardi, is the original motion on the screen? Lord Mayor, I've asked the original <laughs> recommendation. The, okay. The original recommendation as printed in the papers. If I can clarify, the motion before you for consideration is that which was moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Clarehan, which is a deferral. That which you are seeking, Councillor uh, Abiyad, can only be dealt with if the deferral motion before you is lost. So I'll ask, ask for the motion before us, then, Lord Mayor, to be put. Yeah. Sorry, just excuse me, Councillor Abiyad. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. Well, right. I'd ask for it to be put, and I'll foreshadow that I'd move the original recommendation if it fails. Okay, thank you. So, members, you are now, I've just taken procedural advice. Members, we have to deal with the motion to defer. You need to vote on that now, and then Councillor Abiad is foreshadowed. What happens if Councillor Henders amendment? It fails. Okay. Yes, it failed. So, members, I'm now putting to you for a vote on Councillor Martin's motion to defer. Those in favour? Those against? Okay. That fails. Councillor Abiyar. I move the uh, original recommendation as recommended to this council. Uh, in our papers, Lord Mayor, and I seek a second it. Second, you've got Councillor Antic. I think we'll waste that enough time, Lord Mayor. Um, I'll move that to be put. Okay, so the move is moving to be put. Councillor, seconding, you're seconded to be put. Yes, you are. So we're going to put the motion without debate, members, and it's the original motion as per your papers. I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? The motion carries. Vision. Those members voting in favour of the motion, please rise. Councillor Wilkinson, Councillor Abiyad, Councillor Hender, Councillor Spammer, Councillor Antic, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Moran. And the motion is said carried. Members, I'm going to take you on to item 7.3, Hutt Street Safety Business Vacancies in Amenity, page 198. You have a recommendation to authorise and approve. Once you've dealt with the motion, members, I'll then be looking to you after you've voted on the motion because I will require up to four nominations, and you can self-nominate, to fill a working group as per that motion. But I will do that after you've dealt with a, dealt with a, dealt with a substantive motion. Yes, and Councillor Mulaney is back with us in the chamber. Thank you, Councillor. Members, item 7.3, I'm in your hands. You're moving an alternate motion. What are you doing, Councillor? Yeah, there it is, back on the screen. Okay, could you please read that to your fellow elected members, Councillor? Well, it's, uh, no. uh, I think it's um, an additional, yeah, additional points? Additional points, yeah, additional points three and four. Um, three notes that the previous decision from 13 February 2018 to install five CCTV cameras within the vicinity of the southern end of, the, of Hutt Street and point four, which is a new point, proves $304,000 for the, or amount, the amount of time we've burnt tonight, um, for the installation of five CCTV cameras and uh, associated asset management costs to be included in the quarter three revised forecast. Q3 okay, so everything else is consistent with the original recommendation. You've got the inclusion of point three and point four. You're moving that as an alternate motion. You have a secondary council, Moran. The floor is yours. Do you wish to speak to it? Well, I mean, look, just to say, Lord Mayor, that. Um, this, uh, this um, motion contemplates the original motion, I think, of Councillor Moran, which was to uh, install uh, CCTV cameras down that neck of the woods. Um, it was originally contemplated it would be the, the motion perhaps didn't flesh that out, in my view, so, so I've uh, uh, sought to actually add that in to be very clear about the fact that we are uh, supporting the installation of those cameras in some capacity. Um, it will require, as I understand it, uh, our, uh, in relation to point one, our um, staff to deal with the uh, City Safe CCTV network strategic group uh, at their upcoming meeting to deal with the issue of whether or not they are actually monitored. Uh, it would be an extraordinary thing in my view if they were not. Uh, and uh, I would be uh, more than surprised if the group didn't recommend that they be, given the uh, issues down that part of the city which uh, are my own. Um, Lord Mayor, can I say, uh, Intermittently, just in relation to the uh, uh, the report itself, um, it's multifaceted. It deals with uh, uh, many different angles, uh, and it deals with them very nicely. Except to say that there is this repeated suggestion there that this is somehow a perceived safety issue. Um, this is not a perceived safety issue. This is by by far from it. It is absolutely no um, perception uh, to be involved in here. We have seen, as we've said many times, um, serious. Uh, criminal assaults, um, we have seen uh, uh, drug dealing and we have seen all sorts of, now I know Councillor Martin uh, is shaking his head here, um, we have been clear time and time again 
that this is not uh, a witch hunt uh, in any sense. Uh, this is not us pointing the finger at the homeless or the Hutt Street Centre. Uh, we, have, we have, no, not the police at all. If you've been paying attention, you know, if you've been paying attention, you know that I have on many occasions commended the good work that SAFOL have done and continue to do. Um, there is absolutely no suggestion of that whatsoever. Uh, it's always convenient at least because at the end of the day um, it, it becomes a political issue then and not one of practicalities which it is. And the, the reality is it has become a very dangerous part of the street on occasions uh, and it has become a, an eyesore uh, on others. So we have a tried, we have tried in a sensible way to address those issues. The report has got a long way to do that. It makes a number of recommendations. I'm glossing over of course the working party which uh, is an additional um, mechanism which I think will also be uh, of help and uh, I look forward to nominating myself to sit on that um, because uh, I think we need local representation for this local issue. So it's uh, not of course a North Adelaide issue but um, Councillor Martin I'm sure will, uh, will take us through why it is that it's a uh, matter for the North Ward Councillor. But anyway I'd invite Councillor Martin to go down to that part of the city and spend more time down there. Uh, so that he can uh, understand how serious this issue has become. I might say that in recent times the, uh, the city has improved, I think. There's been an increase in, uh, that part of the city has in, improved, an increase in police patrolling as well. There have been, um, I, I believe, many instances of police uh, intervention down there, so I'm very pleased that that's that. I think this is a step in the right direction and uh, I ask members to support it. Thank you, Councillor Antic. Councillor Mann, you seconded. I reserve my right. Members, I'm looking to you. Councillor Clarion. Lord Mayor, I'm just looking at the altered, which is now the, um, the altered by alternative motion, and I want to ask the question, what, is the ri what are the risks associated with the um, CCTV cameras or C uh, not being monitored by the City Safe CCTV strategic group? I mean, $304,000 for unmonitored cameras is a huge risk. See you. Well, I'll ask I'm sure to respond to that function. Thank you through you, Lord Mayor. Um, certainly the CCTV strategic group has the ultimate say as to whether the, uh, the cameras are monitored or not. Uh, an administration will advocate very strongly for that uh, to occur. I couldn't comment uh, right now on the, the likelihood of success of that, but we will advocate very strongly. Um, if by some chance the group is not in favour uh, of monitoring the cameras. They can still be installed and they would record uh, incidents, so they would still serve some purpose. Uh, but I would imagine if the group did not uh, endorse monitoring the cameras that we would bring that back to Council for consideration before taking further action. Okay, thank you. Uh, and look, you know, I think this is a terrific report. It covers all angles. Um, we have to do something about the situation there. Uh, let's not pretend that you know that there isn't an issue. There is. Um, we're not pointing the finger at anyone. What we're wanting to do is to actually take some action and also get people working together. And yes, oh, you forgot to mention Councillor Antic. I put that up as an amendment, so um, so it's there. Um, and I'm really, really pleased. And I think that there will be some very positive outcomes. And I also like the notion of the time frame, as in 90 day project and less where possible, so that we can actually get some runs on the board straight away. But we must do something. Uh, and I think this report covers all angles. So I thank the administration for the work behind it. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Aviad. Well, I'm just, uh, I'm, look, I'm very supportive of this. I've just got a, a quick question I wanted to ask with regards to the $304,000 expenditure for five cameras at 60K a camera. We're not talking about infrastructure here. I'm just trying to find more details in the report, and I'm sorry if I've missed it. Um, are we just talking hardware? We're we talking including monitoring. What are we talking? Yeah. Cabling. See you. Thanks, Sean. Thank you, through you, Lord Mayor. Uh, the cost is inclusive of a number of factors. 
uh, councillors. So uh, the primary contributor to that cost is the um, installation of fibre optic cable uh, in the area, but it also includes <coughs> mounting the CCTVs and getting power to the area and the actual physical work uh, involved in installing the cameras. The cameras themselves are a relatively minor component uh, of the overall cost of about $5,000 per camera. So, yeah, is there a breakdown somewhere of that cost? Sorry, through you a little bit. We can provide that information separately to councillors. Just as a, a rule of thumb, though, fibre optic cable costs in the order of $700 a metre uh, to install. Yeah, so is there, what I'm trying to get at, obviously we're rolling out a smart city strategy, we've got Wi-Fi, there's a lot of opportunities at which we can cable the cameras back in, especially if they're not being monitored live, where we're not talking about a 10 second or 20, 30 second delay. So potentially if we're talking about recording uh, versus feeding back to the centre, look, I, I think uh, the cost uh, when compared to safety is nothing. Um, you know, safety is everything. So it's not a dispute of that. But uh, for me, it's just about trying to be vigilant with any expenditure. So if there is a better way to do it, uh, I'm hoping, I'm sure we've explored that already. So it's not criticism to administration at all. Uh, I'm just mindful that 304K is a substantial amount of money uh, to spend. And if we can get that in a memo, if there's a confidential commercial issue or whatever, uh, I'd just like to understand a little bit more about what those costs are. That's all. Take that as a comment, Sean. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Antic. Um, Abby, now, Councillor Antic, we don't have any further speakers. Back to you to sum up. Oh, Councillor Moran. Um, look, obviously, everybody here except everybody here except one councillor accepts that um, that this is a situation where the council has responded to a, a very suddenly increasing problem. We're all used to the problems of, uh, of the, particularly the West End and Hutt Street with the interface between um, services and residents and businesses. That's something that we've all got used to. And I think some people thought that, um, we were, that it was drumming up a bit of drama, talking about the original system, until, of course, we saw the videos, we went down ourselves, we spoke to the people, we saw the empty shops and realised that this was a, um, a sudden onset um, problem that was just getting worse and worse by the day. The police verified that in their confidential briefing, that uh, while there weren't um, the reports, they had noticed the escalation in that area. The, um, the Hutt Street Centre itself um, acknowledges that they're having trouble um, outside their centre. Uh, nobody argues that it's a very well-run centre inside, but it is a lightning rod to, um, to undesirables um, who may mostly are not um, clients, as we've been told, of the centre. Nobody here has ever criticised the centre. Nobody here has ever criticised the police. I will repeat what I said. The centre is well run. They organise themselves internally very well. They cannot be responsible for the street. They too are at a loss what to do, as what to do. They can't set a vigilante force out. We've it's just and nobody has said it's their pro problem. Um, Please continue, Councillor. But because Councilman. of the nature of um, drug and rehab, rehab centres and homeless centres, they do tend to be a magnet for undesirable behaviour, which is not from the clients of the um, centre. Um, Ian Cox knows that we're not critical of him. The police know that we're not critical. And we're all, everybody except a few individuals, um, realise that there is no demonising of the homeless, far from it. Uh, in fact, the Homeless magazine has pointed out that the dangerous, violent behaviour around the Hunt Street Centre has in fact deterred many homeless back into the parklands and the truly homeless are indeed calling for action. Indeed, local drug and rehab centres have suggested things like um, registering clients to the Hutt Street Centre so that um, they can separate the truly homeless from the people who are just going there for a meal and to buy drugs. And that's being looked at, I understand, by the centre. We've all seen the videos. I'm not going to argue the, um, the validity of CCTV cameras because that is done and dusted. Um, as Hassan very rightly said, what price safety? When you consider the enormous price of buying the Lucornia site in North Adelaide, this is core business. 
and this is what we should be spending money on. So um, I would like to, would you like me to nominate people now? Uh, I'll deal with that after we've dealt with this motion. Oh, okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Antic, you're summing up? Just very quickly, Lord Mayor, I think uh, that's very nicely summed up by Councillor Moran. She actually wrote a very good piece in the, the advertiser a few months or a month or so ago, which summarised that exactly, which was at the end of the day here, we are looking to protect vulnerable people in all ways we can. And this is certainly one of these people who are potentially at risk from some of this violent activity down there. So any suggestion otherwise is an, a total misnomer uh, and uh, the problem is real. Safe Hole themselves, I think uh, Councillor Moran meant to say, uh, acknowledged that on radio uh, many times. So uh, Constable Wall himself, I think, noticed that. So um, I, I just want to clarify that point and thank, thank Councillor Moran for that uh, uh, clarification. It, uh, it is indeed a problem. We look forward to this assisting with the solution. Thank you. So members, we will now vote on this matter and then I'll look to you for organising up to four persons to join the working group. Members, so we've got the motion before us. Those in favour? Those against? The motion is carried. Now, members, you can self-nominate. I have up to four. If I go over four, I will go to a ballot. So, hands up who wants to be on the working group. Could I nominate No, you can nominate yourself. It's self-nomination, members. Oh, could I, could I, uh, could I do a preamble to that, though? I think that the ward councillors and and area councillors should be on it. I think that that should be something that's directed to people. I really don't think it's fair if two ward councillors from another ward um, are then sitting in on that. So I think the combination has to be the two ward councillors and two of the area councillors. Okay, so members, we, uh, what we will do, we'll, I will take that as a comment. Um, that has not been included in your recommendation nor your paper, so I'll take that as a comment, but if we have more than four, I will take this to a ballot. So who are the nominees, members? Councillor Moran, you're nominating. DLM, you're nominating. Councillor Clarehan. Lord Mayor, I um, asked Councillor Corbell if she was prepared to sit on the working party and she said yes. Okay. I think I can accept that in Councillor Corbell's absence. I will. Councillor Antic. You are nominating. Do I have any further nominees? I don't, so we have... Lord Mayor, yes. look, I had of interest, but I'm happy to draw that Central Ward is also impacted as a result. Understood, Councillor. So, members, we have up to four. We currently have four. That is correct. Councillor Moran, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Corbell Moore, Councillor Antic. So it fills the quota. So I need a mover, I think, moved by Councillor Wilkinson, seconded by Councillor Clarehan. So all in favour? Anyone against? We carry. We have our four for the working group. Thank you, members. Now, members, I'm going to take you on. Now, item 7.4 and 7.5, I'm going to attempt at least, members, to do this on block. So unless you want to debate any of these items, or do you want to debate any of these members, those items, members? Councillor Rabia, you would like to? I'd like to make 7.4 and just make a comment. A comment about 7.4? A, qu a question? Would you like to pull out 7.4 in that case? Okay. Okay, so members, I don't see any hands on 7.5, so I'm going to put 7.5 directly to the floor. Can I have a mover, please? Moved by Councillor Arbiard, seconded by Councillor Clarehan. No debate. I'm going to put it straight to the floor. Those in favour? Those against, we've just carried item 7.5. We go back to 7.4, Councillor Avia. Look, Lord Mayor, I'm happy to move um, as printed. I just want to make a comment or possibly ask a question with regards to um, to the council election and caretaker, mo caretaker policy. Okay, what I'll do is, I, if you'd like to ask a question now, and then I'll get you a seconder for as printed. Well, so happy to get a seconder first. You'd like that now? Okay, members, do I have a seconder for as printed for 7.4, Councillor Hender? Thank you, Councillor. Um, just quickly, Lord Mayor, I think it's a council plays a very important role in council administration in this process, and I really think it's important from an engagement perspective. We are getting maximum exposure and engagement within our constituents for them to understand that we are undergoing an election process and there's an election process happening. Uh, as we appreciate, we've had a huge number of new tenants in the city of Adelaide and new businesses in the city of Adelaide. Previously, uh, which hasn't quite worked as well as it should have, but the last election, there needs to be a website or an undertaking by the CEO 
for a website to be available for ratepayers, for them to be able to punch their details in there to work out if they're registered on the election roll or not, uh, and if not, so they can register. So I want to ask a question of the administration, if that will be happening um, as part of the council election for 2018 and caretaker policy, if that will be an undertaking that this administration will have. I'll take that as a question, Councillor Aviad. CEO, can you address that matter, please, on behalf of Councillor Aviad? Three Three or more. Um, there is actually a page, I think, already, that's already live that allows people to register. Um, we're not in a position yet for them to check their current registration status, so I'd need to take that piece on notice and or an undertaking to ensure that occurs. Well, look, I, I think that needs to happen because the common question from most ratepayers is, am I registered? And we have no way of ever telling our ratepayers if they are or not. So I think it's important that there is, with smart city status that we're pushing, uh, that our database is available online for ratepayers to know if they are registered or not. Otherwise, there's duplications, there's issues, and I think it's important for people to participate in their democratic right in this process to be part of the process for them to understand that they're already registered. So if that undertaking can be um, taken on board by admin and potentially provide some feedback on that at a later stage, I would really appreciate that. Thank you, Councillor Abiyad. Members, do I have any further debate about item 7.4 before I put it to the vote? I don't. Councillor Abiyad, just, Abiyad, just summing up. So, members, I put this before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 7.4 with Councillor Abiyad's comments duly noted. I take you on then, members, to item 8.1, which is a question on notice from our Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Vershaw, regarding public art projects. Uh, DLM, would you like to read out your question on notice or would you like it as read? Um, I'm happy to have it as read. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, DLM, would you care for the Lord Mayor to read out the answer to your question on notice or would you take it as read? I'm happy to take it as read. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Okay, so for members of the gallery and the media, we do have copies of this question on notice here. If you would like one, please just ask. Thank you. Members, I will continue. Um, I go to questions without notice. Do I have any questions without notice? I don't. I'll keep going. Motions on notice. I take as noting members that we've already dealt with 10.3. We will deal with 10.1, 10.2 and 10.4. First of all, Councillor Moran, motion on notice, prolonged road works, page 223. And the admin comment has been distributed. Lord Mayor, I'll just agenda. take advice. I'm very happy with the, the administrative co um, comment, so I do not wish to move this motion again. You'd like to withdraw it? Yes. Okay, done. Thank you very much, Councillor Moran. Members, I'll take you directly on to item 10.2. Councillor Martin, motion on notice and memorial to mark the end of World War I. Admin comment has been supplied. Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, the origin of this motion is that a prominent member of the North Adelaide community. I'll take your second. Uh, Councillor Wilkinson had his hand up early, unless that was a question, Councillor. Yeah, I'll come to you, Councillor Abiyad, if I can. So, Councillor Martin, you're speaking. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, this motion, the origins, uh, is a prominent member of the North Adelaide community who contacted Councillor Wilkinson and I. Uh, because he's concerned there appears to be no one taking any interest in establishing a plaque or some other fitting memorial uh, for the looming 100th anniversary of uh, the centenary of the armistice. Uh, his view is that the so-called war to end all wars touched this community in South Australia in ways uh, far greater than other places. And if we remember the statistics, uh, from an Australia with a population of 5 million people, almost half a million people enlisted, and of that half a million who served, 60,000 were killed, and a further 150,000 were casualties or taken prisoner. Now, uh, the question my ratepayer is asking is anyone paying attention to the end of the, uh, the killing that occurred in 1918? And how is uh, the city, whose own employees, by the way, served in the First World War, and I remind everyone that there is a VC in this room awarded to uh, an Adelaide City Council employee. Now, if approved, this motion will allow a member of staff to make inquiries about what is happening. Uh, 
not to fund a memorial, uh, because our policy doesn't allow that, but just uh, to make inquiries to learn if a memorial is planned and to provide whatever assistance the city can. And so I just ask members to support this minor step, but one which is important in the celebration of the 100th centenary of the armistice. Councillor Martin. Um, Councillor Wilkinson, you second to the motion. Do you wish to speak to it? I reserve my right. Councillor Aviard, followed by Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Aviard. Uh, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Look, I'm finding it a little bit difficult to understand the intention because I've just catched the last bit of debate there from Councillor Martin, which said that we're not putting up a memorial, but uh, we're looking for others to do so. So it's, under, it's in the explanation. I just wanted to um, look, bring it to the. I think this is a very important thing to do and to acknowledge. But this council has recently spent in the order of two million dollars on the Anzac Centenary uh, in the city um, to commemorate um, exactly such events like this. So sort of, I think it's something again in the way of duplication that I'm mindful of. Um, and I want to hear the debate a little bit more before I lend my support to it, to be honest with me. Um, and I think, like I said, the last comments I heard there from Councillor Martin, if I would just simply, is through you, Lord Mayor, if you don't mind me asking this question, are you simply asking administration to find out who else is doing something else? Is that the intention, Councillor Martin? Or are you asking? Can I ask you that? Yes, I would refer that back to the mover, if I may, Councillor Aviard, so everyone's clear precisely as to what they're debating. Councillor Martin, could you, for the benefit of your fellow members, clarify? Yes, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, in the preparation of this motion, I consulted and accepted advice from the administration about the wording that would be most appropriate, and the intention is, as it says, to explore whether there is a memorial plan for the centenary of the armistice and uh, to look at uh, uh, ways in which the city can assist. It does not include the allocation of funds. That is against council's policy to fund memorials. However, council is responsible for the Anzac walk and it may be appropriate to ask what is planned of stakeholders, including the RSL and others, and to provide whatever assistance is possible. Uh, uh, if there is no memorial planned, no park, um, then there is nothing this council can do. And indeed, the administration anticipates that if there is nothing underway, then it's unlikely there will be time uh, to have that memorial in place uh, uh, by November 11th. I'm sort of wondering, Lord Mayor, what, why this wasn't sort of dealt with as a question on notice to find out if anyone's doing something, because what worries me about it is the second part, funding implications and options for establishing such a memorial, because it does implicate council for funding, and also the preferred location of the City of Adelaide, including the Anzac Walk. So if the mover was to emit two and three, I'd have more comfort, but I think this would be more suitable as a question on notice which is saying, hey, is anyone doing anything, versus committing council to a motion that does talk about funding implications and preferred location. So being that it's our policy not to do so, I don't understand why those two parts are included in the motion, and I prefer that they're struck out. Uh, Can I further I assist you, Councillor Abiyad? Councillor Martin, you have, in your motion, you've got the possibility of a significant memorial, and then in your debate you've been talking about a plaque. Oh, I, Lord Mayor, I'm open to whatever it is the administration finds out is going on. I'm not proposing that Council establishes a plaque or a significant memorial. It's simply asking the administration to find out what's happening. We're not funding it. The... Okay, I'm, I'm just putting the floor back. Can I move an amendment, Lord Mayor? Yes, you can move an amendment. Thank we, you. We, have, we do have a motion before us with a second. So, Councillor so what would you like to do? Uh, I understand the intent, and if that is the intent, I'm happy to, to make it the intent. Uh, that council requests the administration consult, uh, ask the state government, sorry. So council requests that the administration ask the state government and other stakeholders, including the RSL, to whether any memorial is being undertaken with regard to mark the centenary, the, the centenary uh, later this year for the end of World War One. I think okay, just follow your screen one. also, Councillor, to ensure the card is capturing that accurately before I look for a seconder for your amendment. Council requests the administration ask, it's asked the state government, not with, and other stakeholders, including the RSL,
Okay. Yep, that's fine. That is captured precisely what you're looking to achieve by way of your amendment. Second. So I need a seconder. Councillor Wilkinson, no. Okay, Councillor Rand is your seconder. Back to you, Councillor Rabia. Well, look, Lord Mayor, this is clearly in, in captured, literally, literally captures the intent of Councillor Martin, uh, which he clearly stated in his debate. What he was after is to find out if there was anything that's going to be happening outside with relation to the state government and the state holders, including the RSL, uh, and if there was any significant memorial to be marked for the centenary later this year for the World War One. I. I think that is very clear in his intention. He's mentioned that if nothing has been undertaken, that council can't do anything. Uh, so let's get the answer first. And if then council has an intention to progress this further uh, in any way, shape or form, I think we can deal with that at a later stage. But I think, to be honest, I think, Councillor Martin, this truly uh, reflects the sentiments of your debate. Thank you, Councillor Abiyad. Seconded by Councillor Moran, do you wish to speak to it? I reserve my right to Reserving your right, Councillor Martin, do you wish to speak to the amendment? Yeah, look, Lord Mayor, it doesn't reflect my intention. In fact, it's quite ham fisted. It simply asks the administration to ask the state government and other stakeholders, including the RSL, if any memorial is being undertaken to mark the centenary later this year at the end of World War I. Where? Salisbury? Port Pirie, City of Adelaide? I mean, oh, Councillor, I think that would be implied that uh, we would be within the City of Adelaide. Well, uh, well uh, Councillor Abiard is nitpicking about a, a really sensible thing for us to do in respect of our... our uh, I'm sorry, Lord Mayor, I've actually reflected the intention of Councillor Martin's motion. He well, said, he he was, the answer is no, he said nothing will happen. So, what's the problem? Which place? I mean, what, what is this all about, Lord Mayor? This is a significant anniversary in the history of Australia. And I've got a councillor over there wanting us to see whether the state government's doing something in Port Bury or Wyala. The motion is very specific. Councillor Abia, could I be... Councillor in the chamber, will man. Yes, Councillor Abia, I, I presume, oh, uh, as do all right. of your fellow elected members, that you're in, you're, you are implying that this is within the City of Adelaide. It hardly needs to be stated, Councillor Martin, I must say. That's correct, Lord So, well, if you'd like to state it, I'm sure that we could. I'm happy to include it within the City of Adelaide. Okay, so if we insert the words in the City of Adelaide, Councillor Martin should be happy and we'll move on. Councillor Antic. No, I haven't finished. Well, it's not. There's... Well, I was going to ask, is there any harm in asking whether there is something planned in the City of Adelaide? He has spoken already. I have moved the motion. No, no, he is speaking to your amendment. He can do it. Councillor Martin. Just extraordinary. Councillor Martin. There's, there's such opposition to a, a memorial for the centenary of the armistice. I've got opposition to him, Lord Mayor, not to the memorial. I will do anything for the memorial. Well, if, if you're attacking members, me for putting up a proposal, you're attacking the proposal. No, members, can we please stop, take a deep breath. Councillor Aviad was quite genuinely, I think, reflecting what you were looking to achieve. That is undeniable. Oh, now, can okay, we please well, debate this on its I will not deny uh, Councillor Abiyad's sincerity. Councillor Martin? Um, if, if he is being sincere, then certainly add the words also, including on Anzac uh, Walk in Kintore Avenue. That is, in fact, the focus of our interest in the City of Adelaide. That is what we are responsible for. If some other venue is included, well, fine, that's to be included. But that's an, a reasonable question to ask. That is, that is the intention of posing the question on behalf of the ratepayer to find out what's happening. So you're asking for a further variation yes. of, of the amendment. Would you be amenable to that? If it's not there and someone else is there, will be a still a problem. That's what will be restrictive in what you're proposing, Councillor. No, no, I'm saying it's clear. Okay, that's a, we'll take that as a no. It, it is stated clearly within the City of Adelaide. I think the further inference would be that be a likely location. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Antic, you had your hand up. Thank I'll come you. back to you, Councillor Moran. You did reserve your right. I'll come back to you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, of course, uh, it is a very uh, worthwhile uh, event to um, uh, note. And uh, from that point of view, I thank Councillor Arbiard for his very sensible uh, amendment to this proposal, which has streamlined it and uh, I think in many respects made it workable uh, where it otherwise was not. So um, I'm happy to support this. Uh, I think it now makes uh, perfect sense that it now reflects uh, a, a more sensible approach to it. So, um, uh, so uh, I think that's uh, quite meritorious and, uh, and certainly um, I look forward to seeing what comes out of the report. Thank you, Councillor. Now, Councillor Moran, you reserved your right, you wish to speak, and then I'll go to Councillor Clearahan. Councillor Moran? Yes, I would like to speak. Um, what I think the confusion was that um, Councillor Martin's motion in no way matched his debate. 
What it clearly says here is that council investigate um, a memorial and, and actually costs and locates it. We know the resident that these two councillors are responding to, and it is just an individual resident. Um, and I'm sure lots of residents would say to councillors, what, what are you doing for the end of World War, you know, the World War? And um, I'm sure the government and the RSL have very big plans to commemorate this auspicious occasion. And that is what Councillor Martin said, that his motion was merely an information motion to see what was being planned. Um, but his motion in no way reflected what his words were saying. So I completely support what Councillor Abiad did, which was encapsulate what we all agree. We'd all like to know what, what's going to happen and if there's some way we can help with road closures or uh, pritting up the street or hiring out the venue, we would all love to do that. Um, as for a um, memorial um, in a physical form, well, surely Anzac Walk, which is cost time and money and effort and is a beautiful result, is the most spectacular memorial and stroke venue for this um, particular celebration of the end of the war. And I'm sure in every way we can help to make that a fantastic um, memorial to the many lives. But to try and suggest, as the original motion said, that we build something else or we ask the government to build something else is ridiculous. The preferred location for such a memorial in the city of Adelaide, including the Anzac Walk is already there. So it's a nonsensical, um, it's a nonsensical thing. And really, as again, the time wasted on things like this, when a simple phone call to the Lord Mayor or to the CEO would have told us this, to make your colleagues sit here and talk about things that, and challenge the fact that they don't think it's, it's worthy. Of course we all think it's worthy. So don't throw people under the bus because they don't agree with the way that this motion was framed. Councillor Clarehan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I think the intent wasn't that confusing. There's no way that we will be paying for the memorial. That was included in the administrator's comments. However, I think it is important that we do find out if something's happening on such a significant occasion. And I just wanted to ask if administration in following through would remember um, to ask the Adelaide Cemeteries Authority because they have an annual significant event on Remembrance Day every year. Thank you and noted Councillor Clarehan. Councillor Wilkinson. Um, I have been put to me by a um, a resident of the southwest corner who's a war historian and he was the person that put the notion to me that we should put in, putting up a um, or at least supporting whichever way we can um, a memorial to to, um, uh, to, to Armistice Day. So um, and um, uh, there is opportunity in, on uh, on the uh, Kinto Avenue walk for, for such a uh, memorialisation of the end of the war, and uh, so that's the reason why I accepted the original motion. Um, the other person in uh, North Adelaide who supported it was a, was a former military um, colonel who has clear interest in, in these matters. So it's not just a random you know, person. Um, and um, I think the original motion was put um, uh, was was more open-ended and enabled not just, you know, the, the with respect Councillor Abia, you know, the, the state government or the RSL, but well, what about legacy? You know, another organisation that deals with all or other members of the community if they want to Okay, so it does say and other stakeholders, so I'm sure that administration will look upon that very favourable. So any other stakeholders include just members of the community and legacy? I think, I think that would be the best location. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Now, before I hand you back to the mover of the amendment, who's Councillor Abia, the CEO, I'd like to make a comment. CEO. It's very well made. The centenary of World War I events is usually coordinated by the, um, the War Memorial in Canberra, so we'll consult with them as well. Thank you, CEO. Councillor Abia, on your amendment, summing up. 
Look, just briefly, Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you. Look, I, I'm actually quite disgusted that it'll be inferred that I don't care about such events that have taken place where precious lives have, lo have been lost. I've had family that fought in World War One and World War Two. Uh, be it uh, in the other uh, in, in those in those times, and I think it's uh, to be inferred that we don't care as a council. I think is to be honest, it's, it's quite disgusting, and I feel very unhappy about it, very uncomfortable about it. Um, and just to add to that, Lord Mayor, um, I think it's important to note that I don't like to be deceived as a councillor, where something will be written on a motion and then the debate heads in a complete opposite direction, trying to convince council uh, that we are not going down that rosy path. There's a clear direction in the motion that talks to funding, that talks to a place, uh, that talks to a specific issue. And what I've encapsulated in my motion is what I think was the intention of Councillor Martin and other councillors. So look, I'd hope that this would be uh, uh, supported tonight, um, and uh, I hope we get a positive result because I think it's definitely worth uh, uh, worthwhile uh, uh, time to be able to remember uh, what has happened uh, and to remember the fallen as well. Members, you have, an, you have an amendment before you, so those in favour? Those against? The amendment carries, which takes us back to the substantive motion now as amended, so I'll put that back before you in the absence of any further debate, which I don't have, so those in favour? Those against? We carry. So members, we now move on to 10.4, Councillor Antic, motion on notice, article in in daily, page 227 of your papers. Councillor Antic. I move as printed on there. For a seconder. Councillor Moran, Councillor Antic, floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, uh, it's um, motion uh, uh, talks to uh, the, um, talks to uh, the, uh, apparent breach of confidence, which uh, related to the publication of an article in uh, in Daily, which uh, I'm told is a, uh, an online publication on the 13th of February 2018. Um, it, the uh, the article I've got here in front of me, uh, it's entitled "Revealed: Lacorn New Site Sale Price Millions Above Valuations." Uh, uh, it talks to the, the figure involved, and, and it talks to uh, council sources have confirmed the price. Now, Lord Mayor. Um, this uh, is now a month old, but uh, you'll be aware that uh, that particular uh, transaction was the, the subject of uh, a confidentiality order subject to uh, our um, local government act. And uh, uh, those um, provisions are, of course, uh, quite prescriptive and uh, indeed uh, quite serious in terms of their, uh, uh, their, um, their utility. Uh, the reason we have them effectively is so that these matters can be discussed business in confidence uh, matters, matters of a commercial nature, matters of a personal nature, or whatever they may be. Uh, they're not there just so that we can kind of uh, abide by them when we feel like it and, and not when we're not, and that doesn't necessarily apply to this room, it applies to the organisation as a whole. Uh, so uh, what is clear though from, from the words that have been written here is that uh, somehow that information has, has come to life and has been uh, has been uh, handed through to uh, to the press. Now that um, I, I mean, it really doesn't need to be uh, spoken of why that is so uh, so serious, but but certainly I can say that from my point of view, it, uh, it immediately rang alarm bells. It was followed up with a uh, with an article the following day when we were at Lord Mayor. I think you had to uh, you had to do a bit of uh, uh, fancy footwork, I think, uh, at the time, uh, which of course is yet another. Um, uh, impost upon your time uh, and indeed council's reputation. So I take it very seriously. I think it's a very serious matter, uh, and it's one which I think is worthwhile of, uh, at the very least, an investigation from from the CEO. Uh, I've, uh, I've crafted the motion to um, to instruct the council instructs the CEO to investigate whether there was any breach of confidence relating to the publication. We, I mean, we are we are relying on nearly what we're re reading here, but certainly I think that needs to be taken very, very seriously. So, um, I'd ask, and then I'd ask for the report to be returned to Council and the recommendations. Um, and now, whether they need to be in confidence themselves, who knows, yeah, but uh, uh, I'd, uh, I'd ask uh, that my elected, fellow elected members support that, because without that veil of confidence, this uh, chamber is enormously compromised. So. Thank you, Councillor Antic. Councillor Moran. Um, no. Members, to the floor. Councillor Martin. A question uh, to the CEO, if I may. Uh, was there a real possibility that the leaking of the details of the purchase of 88 O'Connell Street 
could have jeopardized that uh, that purchase. No, no, I want to know. That's an important thing. Through you, Lord Mayor, I wouldn't want to comment on that except to say that the breach of confidentiality obviously occurred before settlement was finalised. That's all I can say. Yeah, no, that is terrible, and I, I do share the concern of Councillor Antic and uh, Councillor Moran. Uh, not only uh, do we have the issue of uh, a sale in jeopardy, pretty much, because the information was released, but uh, as members know, there's another individual uh, spreading rumours about the integrity of, uh, uh, of our involvement. Now, I have to say to the CEO that I don't have any confidence in internal investigations in this council. Um, uh, I note that uh, Council Moran has suggested to elected members that they boycott another internal inquiry into the process associated with the helipad, and that she and Councillor Antic have reservations about the cost of that investigation into the helipad process. So I have to say to you, I have no faith in an internal process that can be boycotted. But uh, my feeling is this must be investigated. I think, uh, Lord Mayor, there are multiple sources for this, but there is one source, one source that began it all and whose purpose was to wreck that deal. Now, we need to get to the bottom of that. We need to find that individual who jeopardised not only the sale to this council, but incurred possibly large costs for the organisation in getting so far into the deal with the possibility of it falling over. It is a serious matter, and I think the people of North Adelaide would like to know who it was that was prepared to jeopardise a deal that was the key to the success of the, of the suburb in the future. It is very important, but I must say I have no process, uh, no faith in this uh, internal process. I've got to say. Members, do I have any further debate on this matter, Councillor Abia? Uh, look, Lord Mayor, I think it's uh, it's important. Uh, maybe we should give the process to Councillor Martin so he could uh, investigate it and run through with it. I, I can't believe that a councillor would point at our administration and say that he does not have confidence in our staff and our administration. He might as well quit and leave this council because shame on you for believing. Lord Mayor, I'm I have every faith in our administration. I have every faith in our administration. I have every faith in our administration. Councillor Martin, please. I have every faith in our administration. The team does an incredible job. I thank you on behalf of my constituents for the hard work you do. It's a shame that you're not recognised for that. I'm sorry you had to put up with that tonight. Well, yeah, Mayor, uh, I, you do, are, I do deserve a response and I was not criticising our staff. Lord Mayor, I made does not deserve a response. Point of order, Lord Councillor, Mayor. you have spoken you, already. Councillor Abia, please, you can ask a question, Councillor Martin. I'll permit that. Okay, no, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, did the CEO understand when I said that I had no faith in the system, that I meant that it could be boycotted by councillors, as Councillor Moran has suggested to all councillors, in regard to the helipad investigation? CEO is declined to respond. Members, we move on. Members, do I have any further debate? Otherwise, I'm going back to the mover who's Councillor Antic. Councillor Antic, no, no further hands. floor is yours. Summed up. Members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? The motion is carried. Thank you, members. So, members, we now move to motions without notice. We don't have any. We now go to exclusions to the public. Mem members, we have two matters to contemplate in confidence. 13.1.1 and 13.1.2. Councillor Hender, you are moving us into confidence for 13.1.1. Do I have a second? Deputy Lord Mayor, any debate? Members, I put that before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Members, can I have a mover? Councillor Hender, seconded by Deputy Lord Mayor for 13.1.2, which is a strategic property matter. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attendance. If you are not central to the next two matters, can I please ask you to leave the chamber?
Members, we are now back in public. The time is 8.41 p.m. on Tuesday the 13th of March, and I'll formally thank you for your contribution to the meeting and declare the meeting closed. Thank you, members.